from the Double Tree Hotel in Southern California, Ontario, to be exact, about an hour east of downtown Los Angeles. It's time for another action packed Thompson boxing card coming your way. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be around the world. Five fights coming your way. I'm Bethel Duran, alongside the editor in chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. And Dougie, we look at this card and we're like, okay, names we know, names that we don't know, faces we don't know. But let's get going with the main event tonight. A young fighter we've seen grow up here on the Thompson shows in a new weight class. And Yuyu, George Acosta, finally gets a chance to be the main event. A lot of guys work their way, but they don't get there. That's got to be a cool feeling for him, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. He's the type of fighter who's going to appreciate that because he's very serious. Yeah. He's very much dedicated to boxing. Um, it, it shows in the way he boxes. Everything he does is technically sound and tactically sound. Um, He's in a new weight class. His last fight, he fought. He dropped down from lightweight to junior lightweight. Yeah. Smart move because he's tall and he's rangy and he's a good boxer. Um, he beat a, a fellow prospect um, tonight with uh, uh, Isaac Avalar. Yeah. He's facing a gatekeeper type, a type of guy who was given problems to legitimate contenders, guys who are going on to fight for world titles. So it's a measuring stick. If if he can win tonight, he knows he belongs in this new weight class. But more importantly. I want to see if he can make fans outside of this his hometown yeah. fans because it's great being tactically sound and technically sound. That'll get you the W. But you got to be exciting to get the fans. You got to put on the show. You, you Acosta against Isaac Avalar or Isaac Avalar or better yet, forget it. You know what his name is? Canelito, redhead, red beard from Aguascalientes, Mexico. Aguascalientes, where I always bring up. Doug, what's called the fight? Where and where? Aguascalientes. And, and what was in a, it? In a bull ring. <laughs> exactly. Coliseum. In a bull race. So that's the main event tonight. And one of the cool features, though, is after you see Acosta and Isaac Avalar in the main event, eight rounds, uh, the co feature is a local young man that we've seen here from Rancho Cucamonga. It'll be Richard Brewer. He brings the fans. And listening to Henry Ramirez talk, he's starting to get that man strength. So that's another young fighter that we look really Oh, absolutely. I, I think like two or three years ago, he was kind of like a big welterweight. Yeah. And he's grown into middleweight. And, you know, he's 11 and 0. You get the 12 and 0, 13 and 0. You're a real prospect, and that's that's saying something. Being in that competitive glamour division. And one of the cool features in boxing, you always hear about, oh, the family that fights together. What about the boyfriend and girlfriend? That's right, boyfriend and girlfriend that fight together, train together, and they work each other's corner. And we're gonna see that tonight. Jaffet Yamito from Norwalk, California, young Filipino, is starting to make some noise. And his girlfriend, cool girl Steph, who's gonna open up the broadcast tonight and she's fighting for the second time in her career. And it's not like, oh, she's there as a distraction. We know her a little bit. That's pretty cool. Comes to fight and wants to put on a show. That's a, yeah. Have you ever worked something like that? Boyfriend and girlfriend the same night? No, but I mean, maybe they're going to start a trend. If they're <laughs> successful, if they keep winning, I think, um, you know, young amateurs will start to hook up and turn pro together. <laughs> Doug Fisher, we'll see. matchmaker in a different kind of sense. <laughs> there you go. And then the other young man who's making his pro debut, Leo Sanchez from Joel Diaz training camp. In Coachella, he's representing Cathedral City. Uh, so a lot of Cathedral City, a lot of Coachella coming out strong here. We're at the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California. And as always, interact with us. Send us the messages on YouTube, on Facebook. Try to keep it semi-clean, you know, like our kids watching. Uh, send Doug Fisher a tweet, Dougie Fisher. Ask I'm me doing, anything. Ask me yeah. anything. And if you're watching it for the first time, it's not your traditional broadcast. This broadcast is for you. So thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Grab yourself a cocktail, let us know what's going on, interact with us. Five fights coming your way, and it's going to be a good one. So, Doug Fisher tonight, I'm Bethel Duran, and our ring announcer tonight is the one and only Sonny Franco. gentlemen, welcome to the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario, California. Tonight, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the Path to Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic fight card lined up for you this evening with fighters who have trained hard to be here. 
They trained to be here, and you pay to see them lay it all on the line right here inside the ring. And with that being said, there's only one question left to ask, and that is, Ontario, are you ready? Well, let's get this party started. Starting off with a bang, let's get the ladies out here. Please welcome, out of the red corner, from Aguascalientes, Mexico, here is Esli La China Cervantes. Eighteen-year-old Esli Cervantes. Aguas Calientes, Mexico, joining us tonight. Her pro debut, and what a way to do it, in the United States. Now she's young looking. 18. Yeah, and uh, so making her pro debut in the US. And she's fighting a former amateur standout. Yes. Yeah. Already fought once as a pro. She, I tell you what, she doesn't look nervous. No, not at all. I don't all. see any not uh, signs all. of anxiety. Not yet, anyways. I like her hair, though. It's tight. Look at that. She's got, like, the, the curls and, and, and some braids. Some braid work. All right, acknowledging the crowd. Yes, very, very classy. And now, please welcome our opponent out of the blue corner from Orange, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome cool girl Steph, Stephanie Chavez. Once again, a very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen and fight fans joining us around the world on ThompsonBoxing.com. We're coming to you from the Doubletree Hotel here in the beautiful city of Ontario, California, where tonight Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the Path to Glory, sponsored by Makita, Belgard, and Omega Products International. This first bout scheduled for four rounds of action in the Super Flyweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring this bout should it go the distance are Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Viriel. And your referee in charge of the action at the bell, your referee from Bassett, California, Ray Corona. Here we go, fight fans. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. She steps in the ring tonight with a black trunks trimmed with gold. When she stepped onto the scale, she weighs in officially at 113.7 solid pounds. Tonight, she's making her professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Aguascalientes, Mexico, here is Esli La China Cervantes. And introducing her opponent, button across the ring out of the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, she stepped in the ring tonight with a pink and white trunks. 
When she stepped onto the scale, she weighed officially at 114.5 already pounds. As a professional, she enters the ring undefeated. The one win with zero losses. Ladies and gentlemen, from Orange, California, please welcome Stephanie Cougar Chavez. And once again, you're ever in charge, get the final instructions of Ray Corona. This is my command, touch gloves. God bless. You could probably tell during the walk-in that Chavez was much taller, and she's a little bit older, four inches taller, and she has a decided reach advantage. Stephanie Chavez, that's her given name. And she said, just call me Steph. That's my Instagram, cool girl Steph. Everybody calls me Steph. So Steph Chavez in the ring, in the pink. This was scheduled for four rounds against Esli Cervantes, 18-year-old in black, making her pro debut from Aguas Calientes. And Cervantes immediately gets hit with the left hook by Chavez. With the right hand now from Chavez. Much taller fighter is Chavez. Right, obviously it behooves her to get that jab going uh, and to control the, the distance with that left stick and, and some lateral movement. And I can't imagine Cervantes competing in this fight if she can't deal with that reach, if she yeah. can't get inside that reach and really get to work. That'll be an issue for them. Chavez, remember, for ladies, it's a two-minute round. After this, it's going to be Leo Sanchez and Eric Espinosa working our way towards El Yuyo Costa and Isaac Avelar. So make sure you share on Facebook and YouTube. Be joined by Ace Torres later on tonight. So... Thompson Boxing back in Ontario. Left hook, one, two by Chavez. Right hand. Chavez has fan base and they're watching us right now. Bouncing around, moving good. Fluid with her footwork is Steph Chavez. Doesn't look like she's only in her second pro fight. Yeah, and that, that speaks to her, uh, her amateur experience. She didn't have a ton of amateur no. fights. I think she had like 20, yep. maybe 21, but she was in the right tournaments and she was in with some really experienced amateurs. She shared the ring with amateurs who have 100 and 200 bouts yep. and did well. Thompson Building Materials in Orange, Fontana, Lamita, Camarillo, San Diego, Ripon, Sacramento. Go to thompsonsbldg.com for more information. Transforming spaces into beautiful places. And as always, if you're going to tweet us, Duran Sports or Dougie Fisher, make sure you use the hashtag Thompson Boxing so we can search them up. Kai can find all the good tweets that we have tonight. Use the hashtag Thompson Boxing. Never leaving the comments for tonight's fight. Cool girl Steph is her name. She's 21 years old. She's in the pink. She's five foot five. Grew up in Orange. You're right, Doug. She had 20 amateur fights, 15 and five. And one thing about her. You mentioned only 25, but it was good ones. She was in the big tournaments. She was a an excellent volleyball player in high school, at Villa Park High School. Oh, so she's an athlete as well. Athlete, and she's landing the one, too. And, well, she's, you know what? She's coordinated. She's got good uh, hand-eye coordination, good balance, good reflexes. And right now, she is, um, she has ring command. And she's bouncing around. She's nice, uppercut, lands nicely. By Steph Chavez. The, the women. Oh, somebody lost a mouthpiece, yep, and I think and it, it was Cervantes. It is. I couldn't tell if that was off of a punch. 
Just rinse it, I got it. Just rinse it. I think I see a slight trickle of blood, maybe from one of the nostrils of Cervantes, maybe not. If not, it's gonna be coming up soon. Yeah. yeah. You know, Cervantes is able to sneak a punch here and there past the reach and guard of Chavez, and I'm I'm impressed by that. Yep. And one thing about Cervantes, it's you're taking on a fighter like Chavez, who's got a good background, and going at it with, with her. Going back and forth with her, trying to trade. Good opening bout here, uh, Thompson Boxing on Friday night in Ontario, California. Now Cervantes is gonna have to begin to apply some harder pressure. Uh, Tara Zell says, don't just talk about Chavik, you Cervantes credit too. All right. Yeah, I did. I said she's, she's, she's sneaking a punch here and there. Not enough to win these rounds, but she's doing it enough to show that she's competent, that she belongs here. Hey, there you know what? Is. Cervantes closed well. Yeah, she did. All right, so this is our first bout of the night. We're going to round three. Up next is going to be Leo Sanchez, Bazooka, taking on Eric Espinosa. Then Chavez's boyfriend, Chapit Lomito, taking on the one and only Duo Ogin. Have gloves? I'll travel. Oh, yeah. Then, he, he's my hero. Yeah, then the co feature is going to be Richard Brewer. And then the main event, Yu Yu Acosta, and always go to the Thompson Boxing app where you can get more content on the Thompson Fighters. Download that for free on Google Play or on the App Store. But you see Mr. Lomito, EJ Lomito. They have their own gym in the Norwalk area here in Southern California. All right, so. I'm looking at the Facebook comments. I got the YouTube comments. We're doing it all here, baby. <laughs> Doug's going to monitor the Twitter, so if you guys want to tweet. <laughs> yep. And shout out to Ernie Green and everybody on the Friday night Zoom. All right, Damian Macias says, Steph has six professional fights in Mexico and even has a loss. Really? Hmm, how? Like... Like, I'm just saying well, right they're now. Not, yeah, they're not on box. They're, they're not, not on, on box, box rec. You yeah. know, so maybe there was something like a smoker or whatever like right. that or whatever. You, you I mean, never, or maybe this person's just saying stuff. Or, or, <laughs> but, but we do appreciate you, Damien, Ooh. checking in yeah. <laughs> as Cervantes slips and she gets hit and Chavez pounces. And I'll say this for China Cervantes in her pro debut. She doesn't look like she's making her pro debut. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. She's, she's competent. Uh, she's got, she, she has ability. I had, uh, you know, I, I, I credited Chavez for her, her uh, hand-eye coordination and balance. And I, I think Cervantes has, has uh, she's got good balance. She's not as coordinated as Chavez, but um, she's not hapless in there. Yeah, good action back and forth. Angel Diaz asks Crawford or Spence, who do you guys got? I'll say this, Angel. Let's get a fight first, then, yeah, then, then Doug will give you an answer. I'm tired of, of like, pontificating about who would win that fight. Who can, I mean, obviously, it's, it's a great fight if, if and when it happens. There it is. But right now, you're watching cool girl Steph Chavez in the pink. Esli Cervantes de Aguas Calientes in the black. Coming up next, Bazooka Sanchez and Eric Espinosa. I think Cervantes just gave this third round away. She really needed to, to apply some hard pressure and really let her hands go. It's her only Good shot. shot landed by Chavez at the end. So five fights tonight. Next. Javi Lomito, Diolo Guin, the third one. Richard Brewer, Ramon Ayala, the fourth. And then the main event, Yu Yu Acosta. And as always, thank you to our partner, Supreme Boxing. Fino Boxing, True Boxing Heads, Fight Stars, and SO. And if you're going to be tweeting, make sure you use the hashtag Thompson Boxing. That's the corner of Yamito, EJ Yamito, the trainer, Steph Chavez. And there you see him making his pro debut next, Leo Sanchez from 
Cathedral City, California, against Eric Espinosa from Los Mochis, Sinaloa. And you see right in that ring, Matt Hustler Casino, new sponsor here, Thompson Boxing, on a Friday night in Ontario. Fourth and final round, the ladies go two minutes. And Steph Chavez, looking good here. And this fight, bouncing around, controlled. Shout out to all of Steph's friends who are watching right now. College student, they couldn't make it tonight, but they are definitely watching. I'll say this about Esli Cervantes. I like her style, I definitely want to see her again. Yeah, I'd like to see her against somebody um, a little bit closer to her ability, maybe yep. a little bit closer to her size. Um, Chavez, even if uh, for a, a male 115 pounder, Chavez is tall and rangy. Yes, she's 5'5". Five five. Yeah. Good uppercut landed by Chavez. Yeah, like uh, to give you some reference, she's taller than Chocolatito or yep. Juan, Juan Francisco Estrada. You know what I mean? They're like not much taller. No, they're like 5'3", five 5'4". Five but uh, she's maybe, taller than male. Maybe 5'3". Yeah, that's true. <laughs> On their tippy toes. Yep. But man, some bad dudes. Some bad, bad dudes. I want to yeah. see that. Sh uh, Chavez is showing us some nice technique in here. I like the jab to the body. I like the straight right to the body. I like that she can. She's uh, ooh. Ooh, you hear that left hook? Yeah, that was a good left hook. And she, she'll, um, she'll camouflage some of those um, punches from the left side. It'll, it'll start out as a jab, and she'll turn it into an uppercut or a hook or a body shot. She's crafty. Turning southpaw is Chavez now. And lands a good right, turned her opponent around in the corner. Final seconds of the fight. And it'll be a good one. It's gonna go the distance between Steph Chavez and Esli Cervantes. Oh, a good fight. Good action back and forth. Our opening bout. We'll come back with the final decision between Steph Chavez and SD Cervantes. Our opening bout here on Thompson Boxing. If you're at this table, you know that it's more than a game of luck. You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino. personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the four exciting rounds of boxing action. To the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Villarreal, both have about, see about the same, a 40 to 36, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Stephanie the Cougar Chavez. Cool girl staff gets the victory. Congratulations to her. She's now 2-0. Oh. 
Hey, good showing though by Esli Cervantes, the 18 year old from Aguascalientes, Mexico, in her pro debut. She was tough. She battled. Yeah, yeah. She, she, you know, she belongs as a professional. She didn't. Uh, she wasn't on the same level as Chavez, but there, there's no shame in that. No, and she'll get some more work. This day, hey, this is experience to grow from. To grow from. So congratulations, the cool girl Steph. So now she'll go back, change, and then work the corner of her boyfriend Jeff Lamito, who will be in the third bout tonight. Thompson Boxing in Ontario, California. Beth Duran alongside the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. So we have four more fights to go. All right, and now, Doug, what magazine is out right now? I've been seeing a cool cover from Ring Magazine. What is it? It's the Oscar De La Hoya tribute special. Um, and we've been working on it for a while. Uh, we wanted uh, to have it ready and to have it in print by um, by August of this year, because in August is the 30th anniversary of Oscar De La Hoya's Olympic gold medal winning performance wow. in Barcelona. I can't believe that was 30 years wow. ago. And you know, in September, it'll be the 20 year anniversary of that terrific fight he had with Fernando Vargas, the bad blood fight. Oh, what yeah. a fight that was. So a couple anniversaries were coming up and we're like, you know what, it's time to, to give some shine to the golden boy in case people have forgotten how um, special he was. And how do you get that magazine if you're not a original subscriber oh, right now? Simple. Just go to ringtv.com, go to the ring shop, and, and click on the picture of that cover. There it is. Simple as that. Now, Sonny Franco. Oh, man, is he wearing purple today? Oh, he sure is. Sonny, I mean, let's go, man. Let's go. from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube. Here we go, fight fans. Let's keep the action going. Please welcome to the red corner. From Los Ponchi, Sinaloa, Mexico, here is Eddie Principe Espinosa.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then keep on counting. That's how many people are here for Leo Sanchez making his pro debut. Waiting a while to make his debut. Finally gets an opportunity. Leo Bazooka Sanchez, Cathedral City. Now representing Joel Diaz training camp where he trains alongside with Antonio. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this young man because Antonio Diaz speaks highly of him. Yep. Just for that reason. Yep. And I know that the Diaz brothers, they have high expectations. I mean, it, it's not just about your dedication or your, your talent level. Um, they want their fighters to come out and perform. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some action. Yeah, coming into Fuerza Regida. So saludos a la gente que nos está mirando. Tonight. His brother is Tito Sanchez. We've seen him on the shows before. Yep, and he's a, he comes to fight. Yep. <laughs> Fight Pass once again from the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California. Thompson Boxing and Promotions is proud to present the next bout of the evening, sponsored by El Dorado Stone, a borough brand, Thompson Building Materials, Infinity Bank, and Hustler Bank Los Angeles. This bank, this bout scheduled for four rounds of action in the Super Featherweight Division. At ringside, your three judges score the bout should it go the distance are. Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Virial. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Eddie Hernandez, a senior. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the red trunks with black. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 138 pounds. His professional record, one win, zero losses with two bouts even. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, introducing Eric Principe Espinosa. And introducing his opponent, button across the ring out of the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, he steps in the ringside, weather in the colors of a Mexico. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 131.7 solid pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut, hailing from Indio, California. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Leonardo Bazooka Sanchez. Once again, your reverend charge, Eddie and Amanda Senior to get the final instructions. All right, let's see how these two young junior lightweights match up. Sanchez is 19, Espinosa is 20. Espinosa is two inches taller and has a slight reach advantage. All right, scheduled for four rounds. Between Leo Sanchez making his pro debut, his grandfather, Adan Correa, in the corner, along with Tonio Diaz. In the white trunks is Leo Sanchez. Bazooka is his nickname against Eric Príncipe Espinosa from Los Mochis in the red and black. Yeah, Sanchez is a southpaw. I believe the, the bazooka is his, uh, his straight left. Yes, it is. Which isn't always straight. Sometimes he'll kind of uh, add a loop or an arc to it. Yeah, the bazooka nickname because it came out of the gym. Somebody saw the way he threw his hand. That left hand, was like, it wasn't traditional. So Tonio said, hey, something like, it's like a bazooka. And he's landing it a couple times here as Espinosa shaking his head no. Yeah, Espinosa needs to get on his stick, needs to use that, that height and reach advantage to his advantage. Not doing it so far. Oh, nice, nice body attack from, from Espinosa. He's just, Espinosa's just a little lackadaisical with uh, his guard, keeping his hands up and, and keeping that, that head and chin exposed. 
And you feel a little buzz inside the double tree. And Sanchez brought a big crowd from Cathedral City. It's always interesting to see how a young fighter responds making his pro debut. The smaller gloves, all the lights on you. Sanchez seems so at home, so relaxed, but also dialed in. I forgot he was making his pro debut. And he's making his pro debut against a guy who's got three professional bouts and has never lost and is obviously game. Espinosa's punching back. He's getting hit with hard shots and he's firing back. So Sanchez is, is he's experiencing professional resistance in his very first fight as a pro. Espinosa 1 0 oh, and 2. Spinoza, 20 years old. He had 75 amateur fights. We so have the background. Yeah, he's comfortable in there. He doesn't have the tightest technique. One thing I noticed, his body shots, like his inside technique is better than his outside technique. His straight punches from, from the outside aren't that good. But he's getting hit in the midsection. He answers but back he punches to Spinoza. Back. Yes, he yeah, does. This, hey, this is a heck of a first round, man. Wow. There it is. Leo Sanchez in white, Eric Espinosa going back and it's forth. Actually, it's actually hard to score. Good action, good action. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Good friend, Cynthia Conte in Las Vegas, checking us out. What's up, Cynthia? Does an excellent podcast herself. Yeah, that, po that podcast is doing really well. Yeah. Best women's boxing podcast yeah, with Cynthia Conte. Yeah, and Giandra. There he is, walking in. Isaac Avelar from Aguascalientes Canelito, as you can see with the red Man, hair and the red beard. He really is a ginger. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and also, saludos a Paulo Vega. In Barranquilla, Colombia, how are you doing? Saludos. What's up, Paolo? Good man. Betty Gomez checking in on Facebook, watching us. And Joel Diaz watching us in Cabo San Lucas. Senior and junior out there on the golf course today, but they're checking out the Thompson Boxing Show right now, watching the young fighter Leo Sanchez in the white. That was a fast-paced opening round. Yeah. So this is a this is a, a, a fight that's going to test the conditioning of um, of both fighters, but particularly the fighter who's in his pro debut. And also, shout out to Francisco Salazar, excellent box, boxing scribe in the 805. The main event tonight: Yuyu Acosta against Isaac Avilar. After this, is going to be Javid Lamido against Diulo Guin. The legendary duel game, but it's a good scrap right here for two fighters. Yeah, I mean, uh, Espinosa is so relaxed. When he's on the inside, he just lets those hands go. That was a nice um, straight right as he was backing away from Sanchez. Sanchez is going to have to get that southpaw jab going a little bit to work his way in intelligently. Because he's getting caught as he's walking in, as you just saw. Daniel Ochoa watching us in Blythe, California. Lou Dub boxing in Victorville. And of course, the legendary Abrams boxing. Always love it when Abrams boxing is checking in with us. Hey, they're, they're, they're witnessing a nice scrap. Yes, they are. Both guys are attacking the body. I think Espinosa, he shouldn't get too greedy. Shouldn't just stay in the pocket too long. Get those shots off and then punch on the fly. And I think, I think Sanchez needs to do what he's doing now. Muscle, muscle Espinosa to the ropes or a corner, and then let the bazooka go. He's starting to do that. You can hear the thuds of punches from Bazooka Sanchez in the white. Yeah, Sanchez was looking looking for some uppercuts. Oh, there. Right hook land. Yeah, upper 
cut again on the southpaw. The 19-year-old Leo Sanchez is a pro debut, looking good here. Yeah, and, well, he's he's figured out that he, he can't be a one-armed fighter. He, he's got to use both hands. Oh! Uppercut splits the wow. guard. That was a nice uppercut. A credit to Espinoza. He stays cool and loose under fire. He takes a good shot. And he keeps punching back. Yep. This Espinosa kid is gonna really, not only test the stamina, but the metal of, of, of Sanchez, Bazooka Sanchez. Yeah, good back and forth. Two rounds down, two more to go. And they look at each other, and Espinosa just puts his hands on like, what? Hey, Paul, let's lower the crowd mic a little bit. There we go. Main event, Yuyu Acosta walking in. Whittier, California, Los Mochis Roots. Yep, man. And Henry Ramirez, they're watching this in the locker room. Henry's next fighter is going to be Richard Brewer, the co-main. And shout out to Brewer, Javid Lamito, and Yuyu Acosta in the back. They're watching the fight right now. And Henry even writes, this is a fun fight. Absolutely. Marcellus Blair watching us in Strong Island. What's up, Marcellus? Oh, oh Cool J, I'm going to knock you out playing. Francisco Salazar's Doug, do you want me to write anything up on this card tonight? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Francisco just got out of soccer practice. <laughs> Shushan Boxing, you're right. This is a tough first fight opponent. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, this is, uh, this is a real test. And you see how calm Espinosa is, even between rounds. He's just got that fresh face. He's taken some huge shots, but he's not bruised or lumped up or cut or anything. So I guess he's got some good skin. Oh, ah, but he can't take too many more of those. But he, see, he's got, he's a fighter. He's game. Paul, let's get that crowd noise down a little bit more. Billy's in the house, Mark Abrams. Jerry McClinchy watching us in Washington. Oh. Hey, Eddie yeah. Hernandez separated him a little bit. And the crowd doesn't like it. It's all Sanchez's crowd here. As Espinoza into the back of the corner. Coming up next, Yafit Lamito. Diolo Guin, but this is a good scrap right now. If you just join us, Leo Sanchez in white, making his pro debut, hands full against Eric Espinosa, who's tough as nails. Not just tough as nails, he's game. He is here to fight. He is really trying to win this fight. Absolutely. Felix Burgos from North Carolina. So we got people all over the place. Well, they're getting themselves a nice little treat right here. And Bazooka works the body nicely. Doesn't look like a fighter making his pro debut because usually yeah. you can see headhunters, Doug. That's true. He's got some nice, he's got good technique. I mean, his his punches are delivered with a oh, little bit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, a little bit more technique and a little more leverage than Espinosa's. But Espinosa has a little more volume. I think Espinosa needs to go back downstairs as, as he had done in the first two rounds. Bridget watching us in San Luis Obispo. Mark Abrams said this is an old school Blue Horizon strap. It, it is. That's that's some high praise from the legend right there, Mark Abrams. Felix Tovar in El Paso, Chuco. Yes. Alberto Arechiga, thank you for watching. We appreciate your comments. Thank you for contributing on the Facebook page. And as always, thank you for your support and the kind words here on Thompson Boxing. Done with three, done with three. All right, what's up next? Let's see it. As we head to the fourth, it's Jaffet Lamito representing Norwalk, California. 
And Diol Ogin, the veteran, the gatekeeper, you got to go through him if you want to take the next step. Antonio Diaz, Alan Carrera, his grandfather for Leo Sanchez. Shushan Boxy watching us in San Jose. What's up, man? Here we go, fight fans. Put your hands together and cheer the fighters on. This is the fourth yeah. round. Fourth and final round. You know what, Doug, I love? It's your pro debut and you get rounds. Not a 15 second yes. Instagram knockout. Yeah. This fight will serve him well. For both fighters, Eric Espinosa Absolutely. too, getting good work. Yeah. And regardless of the official verdict of this fight, I'd like to see Espinosa again. Yes. Definitely want to see Bazooka Sanchez again. And I can see why Espinosa has the two draws, finding four rounders. Yeah. He mixes it up with you. After the third round, I finally saw Espinosa return to his corner tired. He looked wary. His corner should have taken the mouthpiece out and rinsed it off. Something. Uh, between rounds, they didn't do that because that helps the fighter breathe to take the mouthpiece out. It helps to refresh the fighter's mouth to rinse the mouthpiece off and then put it back in at the start of the round, but whatever. This is where you can see how the work that Sanchez gets in the Diaz training camp helps him out. He spars the Uzbeks, spars Brandon Lee. Right, Akhmadaliev, yep. who we know is a beast, a champion. Yep. And look. Like a champion, he's coming on strong in the final round. Sanchez wants to close the show. Uppercut again, left hook from Bazooka Sanchez in the white. If you're just joining us right now, fourth and final round, Thompson Boxing in Ontario, California. Look how defiant and brave Espinosa is. As he's taking a beating in this round, he's like, bring it on, man. He's actually walking forward and still moving his hands. Oh, what an uppercut by Sanchez. Espinosa stays there and takes it. The body work from Sanchez moving at the waist. Yes. Duck, that's really but impressive. Here's the thing. Espinosa is so tough, it's forcing Sanchez to rely on more than his power. We're seeing the footwork and the angles from Sanchez. We're seeing him punch in combination and attack the body because he can't get it done with just a single left hand. You know what I mean? So this is good work. Carlitos Baeza, the legend, watching us in Big Bear. We miss you, Carlitos. Enjoy your trip. 916 G Funky Boxing in Sacramento. You see the redness on the face of Eric Spinoza. Yeah. He still says nothing. Yeah. Boy, he is defiant. And I tell you what, Sanchez is feeling some fatigue now, finally. 19-year-old yep. Sanchez in white. 20-year-old Espinosa in red. Sanchez is still throwing with a lot of power, though, even though you can tell he's tired. Final seconds of the fight. Good back and forth action. Leo Sanchez, Eric Espinosa. They get the crowd fired up at the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California. They go the distance. Round of applause for these two young men right here. Put on a good show. That was a hell of a fight. Damn good fight. It's fun, that's what you want on a Friday night. And you know, it's one of these fights where I wouldn't be surprised if Sanchez wins it by a shutout on all three official scorecards. And that's an okay scorecard, even though it was a hotly contested fight from start to finish. We'll come back with a decision here in Ontario.
experience the world's largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for both of these warriors? After four exciting rounds of boxing action to the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Carla Case, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Viriel, all see about the same. 40 to 36, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from Indio, California, Leonardo Bazooka Sanchez. And congratulations to Leo Sanchez, felicidades. Making his pro debut, had to work for it. A fun fight, definitely want to see this young man again, only 19 years old. Yeah, and I, like I thought, it was, uh, and that's how I had it, 40 to 36, a shutout. Um, it doesn't really tell the, the story of the fight because it was hotly contested in all four rounds, but Sanchez had the edge in each each of those four rounds, yep. especially the, the, the last two. Y saludos a buen amigo Mahonry Montes, como estas? So coming up next, Jaffa Lamido and Duel Ogin. That was a good one, that was a good one. All right, so we got two fights your way, cleaned it out. Uh, what is it? Nine o'clock <laughs> Pacific time. Cocktails, what are you guys drinking right now? What are you having? Like, go get one, it's a Friday. Three right. more fights coming your way, have it. And me and Beta, we're still drinking coffee and tea. Yeah, but not, not for long. <laughs> not for long. <laughs> hey, Kite, go, Kite, give me a vodka soda, please. The Ace of SoCal checking in. You're right. Uh, Tonio Diaz's vest is undefeated still. So thank you for joining us. Coming up oh, next, yeah. Joel Luis. Si nos está mirando Guadalajara, ahorita viene Joel Yin. And also NGBA Boxing. Shout out to you. Out there in Linwood. Linwood. There it is. Joel Diaz Jr. is watching us in uh, Cabo San Lucas, so the Diaz training camp getting a victory tonight. And a good job by matchmaker Alex Campanova. That was a good one. Wow, yeah, that's uh, This is what you want yeah. with a developmental series and a club, a club show. Coming up next, more action here from Ontario. this table, you know that it's more than a game of luck. You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino.
we go, Fight Fans. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner as he makes his way to the ring from Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico. Here is the Hul Elegante Ogin. All right, so if you're a boxing hardcore fan, you've heard this guy, Dio Ogin. From Guadalajara, now living in Mazatlan, Sinaloa. Why? Because he was hanging out on vacation. <laughs> so he was just chilling, relaxing on the beach, got called this week and said, heck yeah, I will show up. No problem. I don't have a trainer, I don't have a cut man, but I got gloves and I've got a passport, I'm showing up to take on anybody. Dio Login and Elegante, a journeyman, a fighter's fight. Have gloves, will travel. He doesn't need a trainer. He keeps his weight down and he fights so frequently, it's not like he needs to be in the gym. I mean, you know, it's not like he needs no. to have a camp to get ready for a fight. He doesn't need to spar. Sure, he all. can go to the gym just to work out and stay sharp, but this is his fifth fight this year. He fought six times <laughs> last year. That's old school. So he's ready to go whenever. He only had to lose four pounds. He stays in shape. Well, you know, there's a message somewhere in there. Hey, I see you with that Voodoo Ranger Randall Fly. That's a good IPA, man. And now, please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Norwalk, California. Here is Jopethle Yamino. Making his ninth ring walk, Japheth Lee Lamito from Norwalk, California. His girlfriend opened up the broadcast tonight with a victory in Steph Chavez. Yeah, and just like her, he was a, an amateur standout. Um, unlike her, he had way more than 20 amateur bouts. I think he had over 100, yes. maybe 150 amateur bouts. All the big tournaments, shared the ring with Amateur standouts who are now prospects and contenders from 115 pounds to 130 pounds. And because of that amateur experience, now he's one to watch as a professional. Yes, he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions moves on to the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for six rounds of action in the featherweight division. Sponsored by Prenovos, Normandin, Berg, and Da, Western Manufacturing, and Thompson Building Materials. Should the bout go the distance, your three judges ringside are Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Viriel. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Ray Corona. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps in the ring tonight with the green trunks trimmed with black. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 126.5 already pounds. His record as a professional, 15 victories against 24 defeats with five bouts even. 10 of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Mazatlán, Sinaloa, Mexico, introducing the Hul Elegante Ogin. And introducing his opponent, button across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps in the ring tonight with a black trunks with silver. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 126.8 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. Eight wins with zero losses. Three of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighting pride of Norwalk, California, introducing Japethli Yamino. Once again, you're ready to charge Ray Corona to get the final instructions. 
All right, let's see how these uh, featherweights match up. Of course, the glaring stat there is age. At age 22, Yafet is 11 years younger. He has a slight height and a slight reach advantage as well. There we go. So thanks to everybody watching us. You got your cigar and your scotch. <laughs> That's the way to do it in Philly. Yeah. yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. That's yeah. the way to do it in Philly. That's how you do it. All right, the southpaw is Jafet Lamido. Only eight fights. Yulogin, the opponent in the lime green with 49 pro fights. Right. Uh, Lamito, good background amateur wise. Right. Uh, I met him about a year ago. He was fighting at the Big Punch Arena before they cleared the restrictions here in California. So he's starting off his pro career in Mexico just to get the fights. He trains at his own gym that they have in Norwalk. And he's a young, popular fighter. And he's, this is the typical Yulogin fight, right, Doug? Where you bring this young man in, and you do is only 31. And why are you bringing him in, Doug? Oh, to give professional resistance. He's not going to go away. He's not going to. He's got that pride. He's got the experience to back up the pride. He's got the ring uh, ability and the ring savvy um, to not just take fighters' rounds, but um, to give him something to think about. And he'll try to win. If he thinks he's, he's got an opportunity to win, he will try to, to, to press that advantage. Yeah, don't be fooled by the 15 and 24 record. Most of those losses are to undefeated prospects that he took on a couple days notice. And as Tupac Wallace says, no coach? Yeah, so he doesn't have a coach because he trains himself. And what he does is the matchmakers now know him having been fighting in the United States for the last seven years. They'll call him directly, hey, hey what's up? Oh, well, you don't need to pay my trainer. For a flight or a hotel. Right, so you save there. Save money there. I'll show up, I'll make weight, and give me some of that money. So he's also a businessman. His family has a successful business in Guadalajara that he doesn't have to fight, but he loves doing it. He can still do it. Yep. I mean, he's you know he's not shop worn. No, he's not. He fought a couple months ago. He actually fought last month in St. Louis. He fights all the time. I mean, even, even during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic in 2020, he fought four times that year. Last year, he fought six times, and he's already fought four times this year. Yeah, so who's in his corner? Well, he asked a couple guys that were in the locker room that I was there. He's like, okay, um, when, you, when is your guy fighting? And he's like, well, my guy's the main event, Isaac Avalar. You want to work it? And then he picked up a, a cut man. So <laughs> that's what he's doing. You got to respect those guys. Those are the kind of guys that make the sport of boxing beautiful. Oh, to me, they're, they're old school. And, and because they never get an easy opponent, and because um, they're willing to fight literally on a day's notice and they fight so often, it's like those, those fighters from, from previous eras, from previous decades. And you really don't have that. You don't have that type of fighter um, as a world-class fighter these days. These days, if you're a world-class fighter, maybe you're fighting twice a year. Final seconds of the opening round, scheduled for six, our third bout of the night here. At Thompson Boxing in Ontario, California. And Francisco Salazar brings up a good point. Yo, know, Jeff and Lee has split time recently on Thompson and Golden Boy promotion cards. Well, Francisco, he doesn't have a promoter. He is a young man who's trying, if he doesn't have a job. If you work, you fight. Yeah. Well, and, and this is one of the cases where being a free agent is it, a, a good thing. He yep. can just kind of slip on to, sneak on to an undercard here and there. So he's actually had a very active 2022. This is his fourth fight this year. Yep. There's his father EJ in the corner. I believe that's his brother next to him. His father EJ actually worked uh, last week, Nick Saludar. Oh, okay, yeah. Saludar, who fought on uh, Ryan Garcia undercard. Yeah, went 12 rounds yep. with the, the prospect out of Puerto Rico yep. in a title elimination bout. That was a good fight. Yep. Oscar Collazo says that was a good one back and forth. So a boxing family. This second round brought to you by El Dorado Stone. Lamito, who is a southpaw, but he'll switch around, as will Ogin. So he'll give him different looks. So this is when you're looking in the mirror like, okay, I, I can do this against lesser opponents. What can I do now as the competition gets better? Yeah, Yamito's trying to figure out the style of, of Ogin. Shushin. You know, obviously, who's, who's cagey. Yep. 
Shoe Shine Boxing says, Augustus, the Drunken Master, was my favorite journeyman. Oh, yeah. And I went down a Drunken Master <laughs> rabbit hole. Oh, yeah, on oh, YouTube? Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah, a lot of fun. At least two hours just watching it back and forth. <laughs> just a that, fun That fight. dude was entertaining. Absolutely. And he was, and, and again, he was like, like old game. He fought all the times on, on a day's notice. Um, didn't have a beautiful record. It was like a 500 record, but he, he fought everybody. Um, and because of that, he was a hell of a fighter. Actually gave Floyd Mayweather a hell of a fight. And Mayweather said that was his toughest fight. I watched he that does. one. He, yeah, said, he says to this day, I was his toughest fight. I was there. I was in Detroit. Oh, were you there? Okay. Yep. That was 2000. That's before he was... Uh, funny, that's, right? when, that's back when I used to like Floyd. He, <laughs> that's back when he was entertaining. He, man. he yeah. was still pretty boy back then? He was still the pretty boy. Okay. And he was pretty good. It's a schedule for six. It's going to be up to Lamido to try to figure out how he can get into dual Ogin. And Ogin is the fighter, right, Doug? If you yeah. let him hang around, oh, yeah. confidence. He'll, he'll, he'll gain confidence, right. And he'll he'll start to take uh, take liberties. As any seasoned veteran will. Now, it, my eyes don't deceive me, but Yamito, he seems a lot bigger than Olguin. Yes, bigger, He's more. Probably put on more weight since the weigh-in. Very as, as muscular. Uh, and Olguin was not training, Doug. His last fight was in June, a, a month ago, like a month ago exactly. Yeah. And said he hasn't done anything. <laughs> well, maybe it was good to let his body rest. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to fight. Yeah. And he's like, well, I don't need the train because I just came off a fight. I had a good camp. Yeah. I'm ready to go. They called. And I said yes. Good shot landed by Lamito. Yeah. You, yeah so Yamito, obviously, he's somebody who likes to operate almost <laughs> exclusively from a distance. He moves around really well. He's athletic. He's fast. And, and that's his thing. He wants to. It's like a game of gotcha last. Yep. I'm going to. Hot shot, pop you on the fly, and get out of range. Second round winding down. Thank you for watching us wherever you may be on Facebook or on YouTube. Also, thank you to Fight Stars, Supreme Boxing, SO, Fino Boxing and True Boxing Heads. <laughs> so you can watch it on Golden Boy YouTube, I mean, the Thompson YouTube, uh, the Thompson Facebook. I also work at Golden Boy, it's no surprise. <laughs> and you know what the beauty is? We're streaming this on Supreme, SL Fino, and True Boxing, and in 2022, that's beautiful, because Thompson Boxing was one of the originators of allowing the streaming. Because remember, Doug, we yeah. had that first conversation, we're like, what are we doing here? And now, it's on different platforms. It's beautiful. Great, great job by Paul Fornia and Joe Pahar and uh, the camera crew. It takes a village to get it done, and we have yeah. a stream up there for you guys. So thank right. you so much wherever you may be. And they just, they just added Fight Stars, right? Oh, Fight yes. Stars is also getting it out there. So yeah. very well done, guys. And also shout out to Kat Monroe with the social media. All right, third round of action. Scheduled for six only. Jeff and Lamito, Joe Logan. And... O Ogin actually has his sister with him here. She decided to make the trip with yeah. her brother. So first I met her, saludos a la hermana. A lot of Ogin family watching I, us in Guadalajara. I think I saw them uh, yesterday or, or today at the pool. Yep. Just chilling. Up next, Richard Brewer is Ramon Ayala. And in the main event, Yuyu Acosta against Isaac Avelar. I like to see Yamito uh, pop that jab a little bit more. I'd like a little more activity from uh, Yamito. I know he's got some fancy feet, but I like I, I want to see the hands. Especially when you're going up against a guy who got called two days ago. Right. And it's naturally smaller. I need to ask Duel after this. Because I told Duel. Hey, afterwards, you want to get a beer? He's like, absolutely. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, hey, by the way, that's also old school. Yeah. <laughs> Especially your old school fighters from Mexico. Yeah. It's like, fight your ass off. I don't care what level. It'd be like, you know, pound for pound, championship level. 
then go have some beers with the fans, yes. <laughs> like in the parking lot. Exactly. Right. Usually he says no, right? Because right. we've known him since the Velasco days that like, oh, yeah. put on. And he was like, no, no, no. And this time he's like, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And he gets caught with one. He is still on vacation. Yeah, exactly. Vacation <laughs> mode. And Ogin is a fighter who fought on Hall of Fame weekend a few years ago, and he upset an uh, undefeated Golden Boy prospect at Turning Stone Resort and Casino. And I saw him afterwards. And he was like, you want to have a drink? He's like, no. He's like, I'm like, you just beat a guy who, who's undefeated. He's like, yeah. The, I, 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 we're at the casino. He's like, I, I kind of want to play a game. Like, crap. Okay. He's like, no, I don't want to do that either. So I, that's been the joke between us. Like, you want a beer? And finally, he's like, yeah. <laughs> Old game trying to trying to pick up the timing, trying to time this kid. He doesn't have the reach, doesn't have the speed or athleticism. So he's trying to he's trying to time Yamito. All right, third round winding down. Ooh. Yamito. He's landing some decent shots here and there. I'd just like to see a follow-up. Just just a like a two-punch combination. Any combination right now. Right, any kind of combination. You're letting Ogin hang around. All right, so we know in Philadelphia they're scotching in a cigar. Who was that? Who was that doing the scotch and cigar in Philadelphia? Come on now. Was, that, was it Adam? Or was it Mark? Mark Abrams? Who? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Like, That's our guy. <laughs> like a gentleman. Like I, a thought, I thought he'd be um, drinking martinis by now. Yeah, like a doctor. <laughs> you, oh yeah, dirty martini would be pretty yeah. good right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got, we got uh, cigars and tequila, so wherever you may be. If, you, if you're around here, bring tequila Duggan. Tequila sounds good. Yeah, it's a beautiful summer night. Yeah. And we'll be talking to Ace Torres pretty soon. Young man's going to be action soon. I can't wait to find out when. They haven't told me yet. I need to find, figure this out. So, uh, a little check. Where are you guys watching at right now? There's uh, Jaffa Lamido and Duo Ogin. Let me know. We'll get you your shout out here in our third bout of the night. Fourth round scheduled. I mean, fourth round scheduled for six. Right now is where you want to see Lamito put some pressure on. Yeah, this is different from the previous fight where both guys were just emptying the tank, yeah. just letting it all hang out. And you know, those were, you know, those were, uh, that was a fighter making his pro debut against a fighter with uh, a, a one, zero, and two record. Yep. Uh, and they were very young, you know what I mean? A 19-year-old and a 20-year-old. So obviously they're gonna they're gonna fight differently than a, a seasoned veteran and a, you know an amateur standout. And this is Lamito style, where he'll shoot you with that right hand. And I, you know what? I get that. I understand that. You see, you know, for like the the first round, the first two rounds, you know, maybe the first three rounds, you're you're figuring out your opponent's style and what you can and cannot do. But at some point, you know, if you're in good shape, um, I want to see more. I want to see more of the tools that a young fighter has. And, you know, we just saw a right hook there. Good right by Lamito. And we, you know what? We do want to see, you know, uh, you know, safety first. I get it. But I also, you know, you want to see a, a young fighter roll the dice a little bit. Doesn't have to be reckless, but you want to be entertaining. Lamito goes back to orthodox stance. He's in the black and silver. That was a nice, uh, a nice right to the body. Oh, here we go. The Ace of SoCal. You want to talk about Salty Vets? One of our, our favorite cruiserweight uh, heavyweight, Flores. Remember that guy that would come oh, in? Yeah. <laughs> he wanted a beer after the fight. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted a beer during the fight. Nothing wrong with that. No. I respect that. I'm seeing a lot of talent from, from Yafit. Yes. A lot of athleticism. Um, he's pretty good at, at doing the switch hitting game. He's, he, he's just as effective from an orthodox stance as he is uh, from a southpaw stance. But right now, I think he's kind of amusing himself a little bit more than the general 
fans in attendance. Hey, it's Friday night at the Double Tree. People, it was buzzing earlier. You better make yeah. some noise here. Yeah. It's also how you win. Right. That's often the story. Actually, actually, that's always the story. Yeah. I mean, say what you want about Ryan Garcia. You're gonna like him or not, but yeah. he gives you something to talk about. Yes, he did. Carolina Dominguez, Gabby Zuniga, Rafael Valerio, Thelma Garcia, thank you for watching Thompson Boxing here on this Friday night in July. Make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app, Android, iPhone. They got you taken care of all the latest news on the fighters, pictures behind the scenes, information, let you know what's going on on Google Play and the App Store. Is Thompson Boxing coming back to Sacramento? G-Funk Boxing, I know, I don't know for sure, but I know that there's talks of hopefully doing it. You gotta remember, Sacramento's also a thousand degrees right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so maybe a little later in the year, yeah. maybe October. Yeah. I know they, I, the times we've gone up there, good fight town. It is, for real. Yeah, I always like to just throw in that Tony the Tiger reference. Mm -hmm. That was his name, yeah, right? Yeah, Tony the Tiger Lopez. Yeah. You know it, man. Now he's a bell bondsman. Yeah, I remember for decades he's yeah. been a, a, a Bell's bondsman. Bail Bondsman. I remember watching him on ABC Wild World of Sports yeah. with Dan Deerdorf on the broadcast. Oh, yeah. Deerdorf and Alex Wallu. That's what it they was. They were a pretty good team. Yeah, no, I remember watching I remember watching him fight Jorge Paez That's on ABC. Where I saw yeah. Paez. And he, and matter of fact, he beat Paez. Rocky, the late, the late Rocky Lockridge. That's Joey Gamash. Yeah. We fought a lot of a lot of really good fighters, a lot of fun fighters. That's what and you a lot would, of personality. And yeah. they would fight on Saturday afternoon. Yes, afternoon. That's that's correct. That's right. Well, you know, we need some more afternoon boxing. Yeah. I know it's different. Let everybody have their evening, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I don't mind that. Right? I honestly I don't mind that the zone is now starting the broadcast at five o'clock Pacific. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You get out of there early. You're watching Dio Login and David Lamito with a stop on the black and silver. See, Ogin is still sneaky and tricky enough to, to sneak a shot in there, here and there. I think you're going to see Ogin um, apply some pressure in these final two rounds. And I wouldn't mind seeing some boxing middle of the week, Doug. Like a little Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, we need more of that. Yeah. We can't have everything. I don't like it when there's um, major fight cards happening at the same time in the U.S. Yeah, I keep saying, oh, I'm going to watch it, I'm going to watch it, and then I end up not watching it. Yeah. And then I watch it on YouTube. Joey Gamash, what a name right there, too. Right. He's, he's, he's a pretty good trainer now. Is he really? Yeah. Didn't Oscar make his debut on, or he fought on those afternoon shows? Early on in his career? Well, his pro debut was at the Forum in Inglewood. I don't remember. That might have been televised locally, like KCAL or something like that. Yeah. I just remember. It's, I uh, think he had a few fights that were yeah. that were on. Yeah, I remember he fought a guy named, I think a guy named John Avila. Okay. And that was on network television, like a Saturday afternoon. The, the reason I remember that is because the advertising was... Uh, the Bull, was it a Schlitz malt liquor or oh, something yeah. like that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was the sponsor. That was the, spo the sponsor. Yeah. So my health guy from Monday Night Football doing play <laughs> Right, dear Dwarf Dan. He, he wasn't bad. Yeah, dear he liked it. He, he, he liked boxing. Yeah. So where would uh, the fight doctor Ferdy Pacheco be at? Uh, the fight doctor, I think, was NBC. Okay. And, and then later Showtime. Oh, I, I, yeah, okay, NBC. That's what yeah, it was. That's right. Fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Was he yeah. really a doctor? And he was, yeah, he's really a doctor. Okay. And um, uh, Marv Albert was. Uh, Marv Albert was on the call, that's right. that's right. Coming up next, Cool Breeze. Richard Brewer Jr., undefeated, takes on Ramon Ayala, El Nino de Oro, Un Puño de Tierra. Coming up next, then the main event, Yuyo Acosta, Isaac Avelar. Ray Fernando, you're right. 
It's super hot in Sacramento. Here are the fighters on. This is the sixth in final round. All right, Sonny Franco, let us know. Sixth in final round. Jaffa Lamino, Dio Logan. Want to see Lamino do something, step on the gas here. Pedestrian pace between these two. 8 0 Lamino, black and silver. Logan gets hit. A little swelling on his left eye. There it is. Uh, Salazar says, Doug, it was a prime ticket telecast on a Monday night for Oscar. Yeah. So that means it was I Tom think, Kelly? I think, yeah, I, I think locally it was KCAL, and then outside of Southern California, it was prime ticket. There you go. So Tom Kelly on the broadcast. Tom probably. Kelly, that's correct. Rich Murata, the legend too? Probably. Yeah. Heck of a duo. Here it is. So Ferdy Pacheco was with Bobby Chiz and Steve Albert. Yeah, that was on Showtime. Bobby Chiz was a announcer. Yeah, yeah, he was he was like the the boxing analyst. He was really good. Yeah. I know he's a Mensa member. Yeah. <laughs> Lamito. He would remind you. He would remind you if you forgot that that fact. Oh too. really? Yeah, oh, yeah. He's proud of it. And you should be. <laughs> yeah. And he was a hell of a fighter, a former lightweight champion, light heavyweight champion. Sorry. Then Gil Clancy and Tim Ryan, what was oh, that? Oh, they were my favorite. They were CBS. What was CBS had Yeah, fights they too. were CBS. Yeah. So there would be fights on all the networks? Oh, all three net all three major networks, absolutely. So that was before HBO and Showtime. Yeah. I mean, there was HBO and Showtime in the eighties, but they weren't as pretty, you know, they kind of took over in the nineties. Wow, okay. Yeah. Cause they were offering licensing fees that uh, the promoters just couldn't say no to. Bigger licensing fees than the networks. So promoters, you know, they went for the money, you know, because they could pay the fighters more money, which is a good thing. But boxing lo lost that huge, you know, the, the the exposure of network television. Yeah, that is huge. All right. Looks like uh, Yamito wants to do something. Get a little flashy, right? He's going to entertain that way. <laughs> Less a than a minute to dogging. go. Coming up next, Richard Brewer, Ramon Ayala. So Brewers fans in the Bay Area, like Fernandez. Check it in. So Lomito, pedestrian work against Julo Guin. Just to call on a couple days' notice, shows up, and Buell Gein does what he does. Professional resistance. Let's go! So they go the distance, six rounds, we'll have the decision. Coming back here at the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario.
Experience Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to Experience Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing action to the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Virial, all see it about the same. 60 to 54, declaring your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Norwalk, California, Japethli Yamino. So let me get my pan, Doug. Let me circle that. Unanimous decision for Jeff at Lamito. Workmanlike. Well, yeah, you said a pedestrian. Yep. And it was pedestrian because that's the pace that um, Yamito was able to control. Uh, yep. You know, he's talented enough to where he's uh, able to do that. Um, and I I'll go ahead and be the bad guy here because of his talent and his athleticism and his skill level. I, I want more from him. Yep. I, I want to see him do more than control the pace and, and merely win every round. Yeah. I'd like to see him step it up and, and, you know, at least try for the knockout. If he can't get the knockout, that's fine. I, I don't want him to be reckless in there, but I think he can do more than he's doing. And he's going up against Duel Logan with 49 pro fights. As Duel turned around to us and he pointed, he showed us the number one. <laughs> like, what number one? He like, one day. That's how much we can't oh, notice. Oh, right, yeah. One day notice. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back here at the Doubletree in Ontario. Two more fights to go here on a Friday night. Thompson Boxing. Live from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube.
Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm with lightweight prospect Ruben Ace Torres, 18 and 0, 15 knockouts. And I'm talking to you here because you're going to headline the next Thompson Boxing Promotion Show, August 20th. It's going to be in Corona, California. Omega at, Products Arena. Yep, Omega Products International. This is outside in the parking lot, boxing under the stars. I know a lot of people in the boxing industry who they're going to be there. Like I know, like boxing insiders that go to all the biggest shows, the biggest championship shows. They're gonna be there because like they're celebrating their birthday because uh, it's get fun. Me to be nervous, huh? Yeah, well, no, no. Be on the stage well, they're stage. gonna see you, no, that's but that's a good thing. That's who you want to be there. They're there because it's it's a fun atmosphere. Just talk to us a little bit about what it means to headline the outdoor show. Um, well, like you said, um, August twentieth, uh, Corona, California. Um, we've been uh, you know working our way up, starting from the four rounders um, to the six, then eight. I'm at eight. Almost 10 now. Um, we're just talking about that. I don't know if it's going to be a 10 round or 8 That's what I want to know. Like, it's too early to tell if, um, you know, to who you're going to fight or how many rounds it's going to be. But if it's up to you, 8 rounder or 10 rounder? And you can look like that a little bit. Yeah. We're ready to, to jump to the next level. Right. Um, if it's a 10 rounder, we're ready. We're ready for 12. You know, you know that, Doug. So, um, if it would be a 10 rounder, I'll be ready. Um, but if, you know, Thompson, um, my team wants to uh, let these play out, um, depends. So I don't have an opponent yet. Right. So um, it, it's a lot that goes into it, but I would love a 10 rounder. So personally, I'm hoping you're put in super tough, right? Like former champion. I'm hoping it's 10 rounds. Um, and that's not to give you a hard time. I think you're ready for it. And the thing is, is when you win uh, a 10 rounder, that's when you, you go from being a prospect to a contender. So um, I just want to talk real quickly a little uh, a little bit about your goals. This is going to be your second fight of 2022. How many fights would you like to have this year? Um, and then where do you want to, where do you see yourself in 2023? Uh, 23, I see myself already fighting for a title um, early in the year in Eliminator maybe, um, by the end of the year for sure holding that belt. Or going up there, I'm not, a, you know, we, time is not on our side. It is, but it isn't. You're young. How old are you? Yeah, I'm, 20, I'm 24. I'll be 25 okay. uh, later on this year. You still got time is still on your uh, side. Yeah. I'm getting there, you know. Yeah. And so that's a lot of things, you know, uh, you got to be patient. But I think it's time to make some noise. Uh, so by the end of the year, my goal is 20 and 0. Um, like you said, I'm 18 and 0 right now. Uh, 20 and 0 next year. Uh, let's get some eliminators, knock down some vets or if any other promoters want to challenge, you know, some of their guys they see coming up. I mean, Ruben Torres is right here, lightweight division. Everybody want to move up now, so, you know, we're right here. I was looking at the Ring Magazine uh, lightweight rankings, and I was looking at number nine and number ten. Um, two young guys, two southpaws. Number nine, uh, William Zapata. You've heard of him? Out of Mexico. The pressure fighter Mexico, out of Mexico, yes, right? Number ten, Frank Martin. They call him the ghost. He just, uh, he just fought. He just fought. Just fought, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you see yourself on, on their level, or oh, how definitely. soon can you get to their level? Most yeah. definitely. All right. Um, those, are, those will be some great challenges. Okay. And, and to fight on the platform like that, I think Cepeda's Golden Boy. Uh, yes. Frank Warner's PVC. I mean, right. I don't know. They're, already, like you said, they're already in 9-10. So would they want to um, take a risk fighting a guy like me? That's up to them and their promoters. But if anybody says my name, I'm right here. All right. That's what we want to hear. Listen, hey, thank you very much for thank talking you, to us a little bit. I can't wait to watch you. August 20, Boxing Under the Stars, Corona, California. Like yes, I say, there's through. going to be a lot of real hardcore fans there, but there's going to be a lot of boxing insiders there, too. Oh, yeah. It's so going to be a great out. night. Great night of boxing, for sure. All right. Main event, August 20th. Don't miss out. All right, folks. You heard it from Ace Torres himself. Hi, fans. The next show for Thompson Bonds it's going to be August 20th in Corona, California from the Mango Products International Outdoor Arena. We're fortunate tonight to have some of those fighters that will be headlining that card. And one of them first introducing, please welcome to the ring, Louis Lopez.
Another fighter fighting on August 20th in Corona, California. Please welcome to the ring, Adrian Corona. Adrian Corona fighting August 20th in Corona, California. His opponent is here this evening. He'll be fighting the tough Pedro Valencia. These two fighters, ladies and gentlemen, will be squaring up inside the ring. At this time, they're gonna face off inside the ring. This is a much anticipated fight, once again, from Adrian Corona versus Pedro Valencia. All this action happening August 20th in Corona, California at the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena. Everybody dreams big, but few grind for it. Everybody cuts corners expecting great results. Only some understand how to climb to the top. Only some can become champion and Once again, all this action happening August 20th from the Corona, from the Omega Products Outdoor Arena, Corona, California. Get your tickets. Go to www.thompsonboxing.com. We hope to see you there. Everybody dreams big, but few grind for it. Everybody cuts corners expecting great results. Only some understand how to climb to the top. Only some can become champion and stay at the top. Ruben. On August 20th, the future is one step closer. Live from Corona, Ruben Ace Torres will try to stay perfect. Also featuring Louis Lopez in a Southern California welterweight clash against Malik Roshan Birdsong. Plus undefeated lightweights Pedro Valencia versus Adrian Corona. Somebody's O has got to go. Path to Glory, Saturday, August 20th at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Watch it live or watch the stream. Tickets on sale now. Don't miss it. Here we go, Fight Fans. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from the Distrito Federal, Mexico. Here is Ramon Nino de Oro Ayala.
All right, this is Ramon Ayala. Not the accordion player, not the legendary Mexican. This is from Mexico City, El Niño de la Condesa, coming into El Sinaloense, which is a song from the fighter from Sinaloa, I a see. different state. I'm like, wait a minute, you're from Mexico City, but he was born in Cuernavaca. Oh, he represents a bunch of different states, right? And he's like, I just like the song. Yeah. <laughs> I like it gets you fired up. There it is. All right, all right. Randall Flag, what's happening, Randall Flag? And now, please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Cool Breeze, Richard Brewer Jr. All right, this is Cool Breeze, Richard Brewer Jr. from Rancho Cucamonga. Trained by Henry Ramirez. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of watched him grow up. Yes, we have. And a lot of times we just see him here at the fights when he's not fighting because he's had injuries that he's had to, to overcome that have kept him out of the ring at, at various parts of his career. So obviously he's, he's looking to make up for lost time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the co-main event of the evening, scheduled for eight rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Sponsored by Belgard, Makita Tools, Rule the Outdoors, and Hustler Casino, Los Angeles. Your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Villarreal. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Eddie Hernandez Sr. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's stepped in the ring tonight with the blue trunks with gold and white. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed officially at 159.9 already pounds. As a professional, he has 31 fights to his credit, including 25 victories against six defeats, 13 of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Distrito Federal Mexico, introducing Ramon Niño de Oro Ayala. And introducing his opponent, Fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight with the white trunks trimmed with black. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 159.4 already pounds. As a professional, he enters the ring tonight undefeated. 11 wins with zero losses. Four of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, He's the fighting pride of Rancho Cucamonga, California. Here he is, Cool Breeze, Richard Brewer Jr. Once well, again, your referee in charge, Eddie Hernandez, with the final instructions. See how these middleweights match up. Now, Richard Brewert being uh, 24, he's got age, youth on his side. Ayala is a little bit taller. Brewert has a very slight reach advantage. So we're underway. Our co-feature tonight, Bethel Duran, alongside Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine. Eight rounds scheduled here at the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario, California. Brewert, cool breeze, the nickname. He's in little white trunks with the blue trim. 
Ramon Ayala, veteran of 31 fights. He's got the blue and gold. Nino de Oro, the golden boy is his nickname. We haven't seen him in six years, Doug. Last wow. time he was fighting, he was fighting at 135. He had fought Omar Figueroa, who went on yeah. to be a world champion. And he fought a lot of tough guys. He fought as, he's fought as heavy as, as welterweight, and because of his height, he's six feet tall, he could carry welterweight, but maybe middleweight is a step too far. And I'd like to see if, if, if Brewer takes advantage of that long layoff. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot of ring rust. And thank you for joining us on the Thompson Facebook and on the YouTube page, reading comments from both. Thanks for the interaction. Also, saludos a Nacho, Nacho from True Boxing Heads. As Brewer coming out strong right away. Brewer should, should uh, tap that body of the veteran fighter who's fighting, uh, you know, an, an unnaturally heavy weight. Oh, there we go, we just saw right to the body and, and a nice quick combination from Brewer. And if you notice Ayala, he wings his shots. Yeah. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a big, there's a loop, there's looping shots and arc to his punches. We've seen in the past that Brewer has, uh, he, he could be a sharpshooter and throw nice straight right hand down the, down the middle or ha uh, stick a nice uh, jab right down the middle. Brewer coming off a heck of a training camp. He was in Big Bear sparring Jaime Munguia. Yikes. He was the main sparring partner for Munguia's last fight. So he got great work up in Big Bear where wow. Munguia bought Triple G's former house. <laughs> a slip. That wasn't off a punch, that was just a, a slip. Hopefully his ankle is okay. Yep. Hey, but that's amazing work. Not just um, being in with a beast like Munguia, who's a volume puncher, who's big and strong, but also at altitude. That's gonna test you. Yep, and he wasn't living up there. He'd drive up from Cucamonga for sparring days. For three days a week, Munguia was sparring. And let's just say that not all sparring partners were asked back. Brewer did the entire camp with Munguia, and uh, Munguia took care of him, invited him to his last fight. Oh, that's great. Paul Banke, former champion watching us. Shout out to Paul. Yeah, former former champion at 122 pounds. Oh, there was that right there cross. There it is. I think that's his money punch, that, uh, that, that straight right, lead right counter. Good opening round for Richard Brewer. That's the casino bringing you the replays. All right, we're, we're, Brewer is uh, measuring his man, and that was a, a beautiful right cross over the jab of Ayala. Let's see it from a different angle here. Ayala put the jab out, didn't bring it back quick enough, and Brewer caught him with the straight right. And as we mentioned, that's a that's sort of a favorite punch of, of Richards. We were mentioning how Brewer was in camp with Munguia. Well, who else was in there? El Terrible, trainer of Munguia, Eric Morales. And, you know, Morales is an intimidating figure. Nice guy when he's not around the boxing world, right? Yeah. But once he's in the gym, and he said there'd be some rounds where Brewer would do good, and Morales was, like, not happy. And then the next sure. round, Munguia was doing good, and Morales was happy. And he's like, just being there, that Munguia uh, speaks some English, so he was able to have a conversation with Brewer, but that Morales was using his phone, you know, the, uh, the translate, the Google <laughs> yeah. Translate, yeah. to give him compliments on what he likes. So, <laughs> wow. So it was, he said, just the, the overall experience, it just made him even hungrier to realize, I'm not too far away from taking the next step. Yeah, that, that type of gym or camp experience, sparring experience, um, it can do a lot um, for a, an up-and-comer. It can really help their confidence, and I've seen it many times in this sport over the past 20 years. Um, I remember uh, Brandon Rios as a prospect, about the same level as, as Brewer, you know, 10-0, 11-0, and 
had a camp in Big Bear with Marco Antonio Barrera. Ooh. And it might have been before Barrera fought... Uh, the Prince? Juan Manuel Marquez. Oh, Juan Manuel. Yeah, in, in 2007. And um, I could tell there was marked improvement from Bam Bam Rios. And it wasn't so much that, you know, Rios learned how to box, you know. You know, he, he already knew how to fight. He just, he just boxed with more confidence because he'd spent all that time with a great fighter like Marco Antonio Barrera at altitude in a real camp. Good uppercut landed by Brewer. And I see you guys on the YouTube chat uh, talking about some great knockouts. There's some Chico Morales talk, Ajaba Howard talk, Paul Williams talk. So oh, wow, some yeah. hardcore boxing fans watching on a Friday night. Great job, glad to bring you the fights here from Ontario, California. Undefeated Richard Brewer. Cool Breeze, the nickname. Real smart attacking that midsection. I'm sure Henry Ramirez has instructed him to do just that. Because Ramirez knows when aging fighters put on weight, yep. you know, they're susceptible downstairs. Nice uh, looping uh, right hand landed by Ayala. So yeah. Richard's going to have to keep that left hand up. He's going to be ready to, to, to parry or block that shot or, or duck under it. Because Ayala does have that experience. And you know these veteran fighters, as it progresses, what do they do? They'll just start winging, looking for that haymaker to land. Another solid round for Richard Brewer. Kubri's looking good through, too. Thompson building material, transforming spaces into beautiful places. Gardena, Lamita, Camarillo, San Diego, Ripon, Sacramento, ThompsonBuilding.com. Here's a comment from Adrian Sandoval. Well, if Bam Bam was emulating Marquez, no wonder Barrera lost. <laughs> that was just one of the sparring partners. Yeah. yeah. Rios. Rios actually had, had some pretty good... Um, technique when he wanted to employ it. He actually had a nice jab, nice nice uppercuts, good end fighter. Barrera had to be ready for everything because um, Marquez was a complete fighter, a complete technician, counter puncher, combination puncher, everything. And I'll remind that guy that that was a close fight. Yeah, Barrera lost, but it was a hotly contested 12 round fight. Heck of a fight. Brilliant fight, really. Third round of action, cool breeze. Richard Brewer in the white, if you just join us right now. His dad and family runs IE Finest Frenchies. They breed French Bulldogs. Mm. I, and Richard was telling me the story of how the family business, you gotta help clean it up, take care of the dogs. That's the business that they have. The discipline to have that. Also a caretaker for his uncle. So, oh, nice left hook. Yeah, got sent, him with that one. Yeah, sent Ayala reeling into the ropes, and that's where a young fighter should attack. And Henry in the corner is waving at him, go, go. Right. Henry wants to see some aggression. Because you, you want the younger fighter to set a pace that's going to be uncomfortable for the older fighter who's coming off the layoff. Six-year layoff for Golden Ayala in the blue and gold. Tell you what. He doesn't look that bad for six years away. No. And he fought some guys that went on to be champions. Yeah, he fought some tough guys. So he's got the experience of what it's like. And I was in the back telling him, like, you know, you fought Omar Figueroa. He's like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Omar, like, and Omar was a monster. Yeah. That guy was a beast at lightweight. I'm 
Brewer's looking really good. Look, oh, I got that right hand. Yep. Oh, that hurt him. That and, hurt him. And that he's right wobbling. hand. He's yep. wobbling. He's wobbling. That right hand was perfectly timed. Brewer, one, two, trying to go upstairs, trying to counter against Golden Ayala. Ayala staggered here with 40 seconds to go in the third, bleeding from the mouth. That right hand was caught. Oh, there's one. another one. Yep. Uppercut, one, two from Cool Breeze Brewer. Oh, that, that, that right hand to the body and also the as, as a counter punch is just, uh, it's just been money for Brewer all, all fight long. Ayala trying to survive the third round. He's taking some punishment here. 10 seconds to go in the third. Solid round for Richard Brewer. Ayala in the corner. Will he survive the third? He does. Yeah! So if you're watching this on Thompson's Facebook or YouTube, you also have options. Fight Star, Supreme Boxing, SO, Beano Boxing, and True Boxing Heads. Also screaming the fight for you tonight. <laughs> Seconds out. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Ramon Ayala <laughs> tagged in the third. I mentioned some of the guys he fought. It was Omar Figueroa who stopped him. Chris Van Heerden oh, yeah. stopped him. Yeah, and, and, well, and Van Heerden was a welterweight contender. Yep. And then his last fight in 2016 against very tough Bryant Pereira. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was also a welterweight, a welter, a world weight, a world rated welterweight, and a former amateur standout as well. I'm not even going to try to say that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not an easy last name to pronounce. <laughs> but tough opposition for Ayala. Now, Ayala. Like, okay. okay, why are you fighting if you haven't fought in six years? I was in the back with Yolo Game. He's like, honestly, um, they stole my money. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, his former management? He, he didn't say who. He said somebody who had access to my account oh, no. took my money, so here I am boxing. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, mind you, guys tell you stories. You never know if they're true or not. Right. But then he was telling me where he was living in Mexico City. Yeah. He was living in Polanco, which is a very nice area. Mm. And he's like, I'm not living there anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. So he's like, so I'm, I'm, he goes, I'm back on my feet. Things are fine. Yeah. He's like, but I got some hunger and I still got some fight left All in me. Right. You know what? He's showing the eye of the tiger yeah. here. He's taking some, some hard shots. He's, he's been buckled. His legs have been wobbled. Um, and he's actually landed some nice shots in this round already. But Brewer is landing the better shots. Yep. Looking more solid. effective blows, yeah. And this is Brewer's weight where he's fought his entire career. Well, we see, you know, we've kind of seen him grow into middleweight. You know, I think when, yeah. when we first called uh, one of his fights together, I think he was like 150 pounds, 152 yeah. or so. And we're thinking, because he was young, we're thinking, well, maybe he can make 147. But. I think when, when he was healing from like the hand injuries yeah, and then the knee injury, it, yeah. right, he just he got big <laughs> and he was growing, you know? So here he is at middleweight. Looking good, sitting down on yeah. his punches. As Henry Ramirez said, he's starting to get that man strength, not a little kid anymore. I can see that. Charles Bossiker watching us. Hey, Charles, how you doing? Thank yep. you for joining us. Excellent matchmaker from the Southern California area. Somebody just said that uh, Ayala looks like a little city salido. <laughs> yeah, I can see that yeah. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> In the corner of Ayala telling him, throw, you need to throw punches. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> Deflected by Ayala in the blue. Fourth round, winding down, scheduled for eight. Our co-feature tonight, Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, Thompson Boxing. Make sure you use the hashtag, Thompson Boxing.
Headed to the fifth round, Henry Ramirez. Good stable that he has. Young fighters, you got Richard Brewer. Also, Louis Lopez we're gonna see soon. For the kid, uh, Knuckle Nelson, the iron worker, he's here tonight too. Yeah, and that's a that's a great thing about Henry is um, as, as much success as he has, uh, has had as a professional trainer, he remains in the amateur ranks. Oh yeah. And he still trains kids. Um, and, and gets them in the, into the amateur programs. And um, if they have the aptitude and the desire, um, they box into their teens. And, and those who want to turn pro, like Richard Brewer, they do so under his tutelage. Lane Cross Boxing, where Henry has his guys in Riverside, California. Got a good young stable of young kids. We're in the fifth round. So what do you see? If you're Brewer, what do you do now, Doug? You know, you're controlling this fight, but what do you do? I say you um, you take the fight to Ayala, push him back. Don't be content to just box around him. Push him back. I mean, he showed that he's um, he's game and he'll, he'll let the, his hands go, but uh, only sporadically. And I haven't seen um, any indication that Ayala has the kind of power that can turn this fight. Um, now you don't want to get hit with anything stupid, yeah. obviously, but if you're if you're on your p's and q's and 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 you know you're being defensively responsible, you can apply pressure, and I think that's what the younger man, a naturally bigger man, um, who isn't coming off a long layout, I think that's what he should be doing to Ayala, pushing him back to the ropes, where he can attack the body um, and and work on the inside a little bit. That's how you break down a guy. Shout out to Roger Chapa, my favorite immigration attorney out in the Calexico area. You'll see him. Also, Cal Attorneys, proud sponsor of Ronnie Reels, Alexis Rocha, out in Santana. Y saludos a toda la gente que nos está mirando en la Ciudad de México, en la Condesa, el niño de la Condesa, Ramón Ayala. Ayala in blue, Richard Brewer in white. Doug, you'll love the conversation that's going on YouTube right now. <laughs> what are they talking about? About the WBA and their oh, belts. Oh, yeah. And the hostages of the WBA. <laughs> the hostages of the... You know what? Yeah. The WBA is the oldest sanctioning organization out there. They drive everybody crazy, but guess what? Those, those uh, sanctioning organizations are part of boxing, you know? The networks want championship boxing. And uh, the promoters want to deliver what the networks want so they can get that exposure for their fighters and the licensing fees. So they need the sanctioning organizations. And they're all in business together. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the sanctioning organizations are in tight, not just with the promoters and the networks, but with the commissions. Yeah. So, I mean, I get they're entrenched. Yeah. And, and, and to some extent, boxing deserves them. I hate to say it, but they deserve each other. They deserve each other. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> oh, the ace of SoCal, our good friend. He's always good for those snarky remarks. You know how uh, there's that nightclub here called Misty's? Yeah. He said, I can't wait for the Misty's championship belt be, to be brought out <laughs> yep, by the there WBC. You go. Yeah. I mean, they, they all it could, could happen. <laughs> hey, if you have a sanctioning if body. You're, if you're willing to pay that sanctioning fee, they'll come up with a belt, hey, period. We can fight some fighters in there. Yeah, <laughs> We definitely can. Oh, yeah. Beth and Duran, Doug Fisher, and you, wherever you may be. If you got questions for Doug, let us know. We'll interact with you guys. Appreciate you on the Thompson Boxing Facebook and YouTube pages. Make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app for more information as to what's going on with the fighters. The backgrounds, good pictures from Carlitos and Kite. And they're on the YouTube, they're talking about women's boxing too in the belts. Choi and Zen Atki. Yeah. So, hey, hardcore fans are watching us tonight. Those are, uh, yeah. These Cheers are some, to these you. These are hardcore topics. <laughs> uh, how many consecutive events has Thompson had at this venue? 22 years. You so the answer is a lot. Yeah. So you find a home, you keep it. If you can find a place to have a party, you keep it. 
Thompson Boxing. Uh, this venue here, I've seen some guys have gone on to world championship fights. Timothy Bradley. And he, he will probably be elected into the International Boxing Hall of Fame one day, so that's saying a lot. And the fact that they've been around for 22 years, and, and mainly at this venue, that's, that's got to make this one of the most successful developmental programs slash club shows yeah. in America. Without a doubt. Think about it. You have a Mauricio Herrera, Josecito Lopez coming out of here. Yeah. Uh, Momo Romero, the Colombian, came out of here. Oh, uh, uh, Yanni Perez. Yanni Perez. Also Colombia. Yep. Fight Danny Roman. Danny Roman, exactly. Danny Roman losing here and still making his way out of here. Yeah. So if you can win here, you work your way up. Ace Torres now on the brink for Thompson Boxing. Michael Dutchover fights August yes, 5th on the last chance on Pro Box TV. Yep, definitely rooting for him. That's a good one. And Pro Box, I like what they're doing with their style. Yeah, I, I meant to subscribe. He was telling me about it um, after the last show. Ayel is off balance there, yeah. but that's, that's also an indication of his legs. Yeah, his legs are wobbly now. And the fact, you know, if, if, if Richard Steps on the gas a little bit and, and aims for that body, keeps working on that body. He can chop this veteran down. Just crayfish. This fight shouldn't be going this deep. Hey, you know what? I got you. I agree. I, let's see if can... Brewer put him away. That body is there for Brewer. Brewer's looking really good, technically yeah. speaking, by the way. I yeah. like the head movement, the head and upper body movement. I like his defense. I like his offense. Sometimes he can blend the two a little bit. But Ayala um, is tough. Yeah, I, yeah, Ayala, is, he's defiant. He's a defiant veteran. And he does have that experience. Bleeding from the mouth of Ayala. He got tagged hard in the third. And here we are now going to the seventh. Our co-feature, Thompson Boxing. <laughs> Editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher and Bethel Grant with you. And up next, a redhead, a ginger, Isaac Avelar, or Isaac Avelar, Canelito taking on Yu Augusta, the main event for Yu Yu. He has a big crowd coming his way. <laughs> All right, Just Crayfish and Lucy are doing it. They say, you know what? Their advice for Ayala, go Mayorga and just wing it. Yeah. Why not? Dude, he must be gassed, hasn't fought in six years. He has been training. He's been back in the gym. Yeah. But to actually get into the ring and fight. Yeah, his form's not too bad. Especially at a heavier weight. Some swelling on the left side of his face. He's taking some shots. And everybody's gonna be like, oh, Canelito, Canelito. Yeah, like he said, since he was a little kid, he had that name. Relevant series at the Double Tree Hotel. Wins tonight for Steph Chavez, Leo Sanchez, and Japit Lamito. Summer picking up, a lot of boxing coming your way. Got a top rank has a show tomorrow in Minnesota. Joel Gonzalez taking on Isaac. Oh yeah, that, that's uh, gonna be fun. That's gonna yeah. be a fun fight, yeah. That'll be on ESPN too. Yep. There's that, there's that right. I just, maybe like a hook after he lands that right, or you land that right to the jaw and then a hook to the body. Comedy, and actually I think um, Brewer should be looking for um, uppercut opportunities. Is that open? Yeah, when he, uh, when Ayala jabs, but he'll have to step, you have to get inside. And right now, Brewer, he's staying at range. Good work for Brewer, good experience. 
It's a veteran in Ramon Ayala. And he does look There's good. There's a hook, Doug. Yeah. There's a right hand hook to the body, just like you called the Doug Fisher. Just, you, I want to see him punctuate, like, like, use that hook to the body after he lands the, the there we go. So, there see that, it that, is. I mean, that's his, that that's his money punch. So when he lands a shot like that, then land a, 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 an equally hard shot to the body yeah. or to the jaw if it's open. You know, like, what do they call it? A two-piece. Give him a two-piece and him a two biscuit. Piece. Order the two-piece with the biscuit. Don't just give him a chicken wing. And going upstairs, one of the body is Brewer. Ayala on against the ropes. He hit upstairs, trying to roll with them. And Brewer lets him off the ropes. There's bing, a body bing. shot. Yeah. One, two. Yeah. But is there a three, four with it? Right. Good round for Richard Brewer Jr. And Francisco Salazar sure did. And you're right, Randall Flagg breaking him down. That's a great way to put it, Randall. Brewer is breaking down the veteran Ramon Ayala as we head to the eighth and final round. Danny Drew, Brewer has good fundamentals, mechanics. That's yes, right. he does. He, his technique is good. He's been sharp every round. But a lot of credit to Henry Ramirez because you know they're not going to be doing those uh, 35 punch combos at no, his gym. No. It's the basics, and it's, um... Oh, hold on, so they're gonna cut, cut you off. The legend is here. Saludos. <laughs> Miguel Cubos is here. Oh, man. Uh, Cubos, who has shown up and got some big victories as a heavyweight. Oh. He shows up anytime as a cruiserweight, heavyweight, every promotion uses him. Saludos a Miguel Cubos. In Mexico. And final round. Sonny Franco lets him know eighth and final round. And Ayala coming out with some aggression. Now, this guy's been away, but he's got a lot of pride. He hasn't gone into survival mode, which I'm, I'm impressed. I'm not. But does Brewer step okay. into that fifth gear? And there's a knockdown. A little bit off balance, but he did go down. Yeah, it, it was off a punch. But he was, yeah, he was off balance to begin with. But it was off a punch. Tim Brewer did him here in the eighth, and he closed the show. Body work, good shot from Brewer. Just want to see two, three, four punches at a time from Richard. Hook, countering, moving around, knowing that he's got a desperate fighter in front of him. from Brewer. That left hook is nice from Richard Brewer tonight. Yeah, his um, his punks, his punch selection has been on point. He's shown us a lot. He's shown us his defense, actually. A lot of defense, a lot of um, ring generalship with his footwork and his movement and his control of distance and the control of the pace. Um, it, I think the only thing we wanted to see more of was just maybe him step the pace up just a little bit more and maybe push for the knockout a little bit more. But he has gone for it um, at points during this fight. Um, Ayala has just hung in there really tough. And at the 
end of the day, I mean, boxers are what they are. And, um, you know, Brewer is not a search and destroy yeah. puncher. He's a, he's a boxer. He's going to break you down. Yes. He's methodical. Good right half from Brewer. Final seconds of the fight. That'll do it. They go the distance. Richard Brewer, Ramon Ayala go eight good rounds. Brewer, congratulate the corner of Ramon Ayala. Sports for ship between the two. One more fight to go, the main event. Yuyo Acosta, Isaac Avilar coming up next. We'll get you to the decision. Thompson Boxing in Ontario, California on a Friday night. to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of boxing to the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Viral, all seat about the same, 80 to 71, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Cool Breeze, Richard Brewer Jr. Cool Breeze, Richard Brewer Jr. gets quality work tonight. Goes the distance against a uh, very game Ramon Ayala. Brewer is now 12 and 0 on the season. You see a team picture, Brewer's dad with him. <laughs> Look at the highlights here, Doug. Yep. Brewer uh, controlling the distance. And, uh, you know, that was a cuffing left hook that sent Ayala down. But with mo like most of the punches that um, were buckling the, the legs of Ayala earlier in the fight, the punches were, um, they were, the, the timing was on point with those shots. He's picking the right shot to land at the right time. And those are the results. It wasn't necessarily a hard punch. It was just the right shot at the right time. Right hard, right punch, right time. If we'll you're back with more this from table, Ontario. You know that it's more than a game of luck.
You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino. Everybody dreams big, but few grind for it. Everybody cuts corners expecting great results. Only some understand how to climb to the top. Only some can become champion and stay at the top. On August 20th, the future is one step closer. Live from Corona, Ruben Ace Torres will try to stay perfect. Also featuring Louis Lopez in a Southern California welterweight clash against Malik Roshan Birdsong. Plus, undefeated lightweights Pedro Valencia versus Adrian Corona. Somebody's O has got to go. Path to Glory, Saturday, August 20th at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Watch it live or watch the stream. Tickets on sale now. Don't miss it. Back here, ringside, Beth Durant alongside Doug Fisher. Four fights so far, they've all gone the distance. Uh, victory so far for Stephanie Chavez, Leo Sanchez, Javid Lomito, and now Richard Brewer. We got one more fight to go, the main event, Yuyu Acosta, Isaac Avelar. Doug, so far we've had four fights go the distance, but it's been good quality work for these young fighters. Yeah, and you know, with, with Brewer, he pitched a shutout, but it's good to go eight rounds against a fighter as experienced as Ayala. We've seen we've seen him in there with, um, with fellow prospects, guys who were like 7-0, 8-0, and we've seen him in some tough fights, fights where he's been knocked down and had to get up. Um, that's a different experience. It's, it's a different type of energy against a young fighter who's just throwing, uh, you know, throwing caution to the wind. This was a little bit different. Quality rounds, he's going to advance from that. He'll definitely advance from that. You know who else is going to advance? Sonny Franco, our ring announcer. Once again, Miss Elvia Cabrera. All right, so we have a couple minutes before we get to the fight at the ground alongside Doug Fisher and you, wherever you may be. So a uh, little technical difficulties here in Ontario. So some of you guys were noticing the lights were flickering. 
back and forth during that last fight. So we want to make sure that the lights are taken care of properly. We don't want them to go out during that. So we're going to make sure the lights get fixed. So it's going to be a couple minutes. So right now, what you need to do, get yourself a cocktail. Get yourself a soda. <laughs> get yourself a water. Where's Whatever. our cocktail? Right. You know what? Right. For real, though. I'm, I've been done with my coffee, yeah, man. Come man. on. Hey, man, you, hey, go get me a beer. It's late. Go get me a beer. <laughs> Just whatever beer you bring me, man. Since you want to be on camera, bring me a beer. Nah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, no, we no, got no, you. No, no, I'm messing with you, man. No, no, no. Yeah, bring me a shot. Yeah, bring me a shot. No, I'm messing with you, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, this is how interactive we are right here. We get interactive with the fans back here. We appreciate everybody else going with you. If I actually, if I knew who he was, I'd take the drink, though. <laughs> but uh, so right now, if you guys have questions for Doug Fisher, make sure you, you can ask him right now. Uh, but you know something? Somebody brought it up pretty good. Uh, the last time we had a main event, Sal Sanchez was upset by Errol Correll, who had a big amateur True. background, and right. Sanchez was coming up. So those are the kind of things that we see at the Thompson shows, where you never know what you might get. Right. On some of these. There's no home cooking. Just because you're the Thompson guy doesn't mean you're going to get the benefit of the doubt on the judges' scorecards. Um, and I think the fighters know that coming in. You know, and I think. You know, I think Team Sanchez knew that that was not an easy fight. I think they knew that, that Eros, um, given that, not just his amateur background, but just his style. Yeah. He has a, a, he has a strange style that it, 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 it could be, you know, it, it could be a difficult fight, and it turned out to be that. Um, I will say for the record, I thought uh, Saul Sanchez won that fight. Yeah. Narrow. I mean, uh, you know. Quick. It, close. Yeah. It was close. Yeah, I had it like 96, 94 for, for yeah. Sanchez. And if you guys wonder, like, you guys really read the comments. Look, I got two phones here. Got the, uh, got the U got YouTube, got the Facebook here. And Roger Chapa says, man, you want to meet you No, man, we're indoors. <laughs> Yo, meet you during the day. At night, right now, right now, we'll get a little vodka soda. We're pretty good, right? Now. And Doug wants again. Is, Roger, why don't of you show us? Roger, you got that attorney money. Come up and show and buy some drinks here, man. But right now, uh, let's see our main event tonight. It's going to be Yuyo Acosta against Isaac Avelar. The lights have been fixed. Let's look at this sweet video produced by Paul Fornia. I'm super excited to be back at, as the main event at the Double Tree Hotel. It's been a long time since I fought here, and it's, it's at home. I'm at home. My family is going to be here, my friends, my fans. Uh, it feels amazing to be back here as the main event. It's been over a year since my last fight, but I've been at the gym, I've been training hard, I've been sparring uh, Jamal Herring, world, uh, former world champion, a bunch of great sparring partners. Uh, I've had a couple fights fall off, so I've been in shape, I've been on weight for a couple months now, um, and just throughout this whole 14 months that I've been inactive, I've been active in the gym, you know, bettering myself as a fighter and looking ways to improve as an athlete overall. Yeah, so I'm, I'm the main event against Isaac Avilar. Um, I know he is a tough competitor. He's a South Ma my first official Southpaw that I'm facing as a professional. So I'm expecting a little bit of a, of a, a change of, of pace, change of, uh, of competitiveness. He's gonna be hungry, you know, he didn't get a win his last fight, so I'm expecting fireworks. Um, I expect him to press forward and press the action, and I'm just gonna be ready. I'm gonna use my length, I'm gonna use my speed, my power, and uh, it's gonna be a great night. So for the people watching, thank you guys for coming out and supporting. Uh, always, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for you all. And for those of you that aren't here in person, you guys can watch it live stream on Facebook, on YouTube. And if you are watching it, thank you so much. Thank you guys, I appreciate the support so much. Uh, it makes me want to train harder and, and reach new levels in my career. Thank you guys for the motivation. I'm really thankful to have the opportunity and I'm here to take the victory back to my home state in Mexico. This has been a different camp for me. I have a new team that, is, that I'm working with. Uh, we focus more on different things based on George Acosta's style. Uh, we've been working extremely hard in the gym, uh, and it's been a really good and great experience for me. I know very well how George is. Uh, he tries to, to use his reach during a fight, and obviously uh, we know that he doesn't have uh, much of a punch, which actually will work to our benefit. Um, uh, my plan for the fight is to work inside 
try to capitalize on the fact that I do have power in my, in my hands and um, I'm, I'm one of the best to win. To all those that are going to be watching me here, live and at home in Aguascalientes, Mexico, I want to tell them that I'm highly motivated. I trained very hard for this fight and I know I came to get the victory. Uh, I know it's going to be an exciting matchup and I can't wait to get started. Here we go, fight fans. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Aguascalientes, Mexico. Here is Isaac Canalito Avila. Desde Aguascalientes, Isaac Avelar, or Isaac Avelar, however you want to say, El Canelito, with 20 pro fights, coming into Pelea de Gallos, Antonio Aguilar. La Feria de San Marcos is the song that he's coming into. That's appropriate. Yeah, so the song coming into it. Fighting music. Chicken fight. Yeah, rooster fight. And he's got the hair, you uh, know. What do you call that on a rooster? A plume, or what do you? The on the top of a rooster's head, that you know, the little red thing on the top of the. Oh yeah, well, what do you the, call the, that? The actual name for it. It's got to be a name for it. But yeah, he's got the. He's kind of got sort of a pompadour sort of hairstyle. It works. The cold. And now, please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Whittier, California. Here is. George El Yuyu Acosta. Yuyu Acosta, Whittier, California. So rough, so tough by 52 miles, a different version. Yeah. Making the ring walk as the main event tonight. Big Sir, Justrata will be his cut man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the feature attraction as this is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Executive Officer Andy Foster, Chairman of Peter Viegas. Sponsored by Thompson Building Materials, transforming spaces into beautiful places with locations all throughout California. Omega Products International, the leading stucco manufacturer in the USA. Belgard, Belgard paves the way. By Makita Tools, rule the outdoors. And Hustler, Hustler Casino, LA's only in luxury casino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight of rounds of boxing in the super featherweight division. Your timekeeper ringside, Mike North. Dr. Ringside, Jeff Roberts. Your three judges scoring this bout should it go the distance are Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Villarreal. And the last but not least, the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Ray Corona. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and fight fans joining us around the world on ThompsonBoxing.com. From the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario, California, where battles are fought 
and champions are made. Ladies and gentlemen, let the battles begin. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the white trunks with silver. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 129.2 already pounds. As a professional, he has 20 fights to his credit, including 16 victories against four defeats. 10 of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Aguascalientes, Mexico, introducing Isaac Canalito Avila. And introducing his opponent, Fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the silver and black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 129 solid pounds. As a professional, he has 13 fights to his credit, including 12 victories against one defeat. One of those victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the funny pride of Whittier, California. Put your hands together and welcome George Eluyu Acosta. Once again, your referee in charge, Ray Corona, give the final instructions. All right, these uh, junior lightweights match up very well. They're very close. Acosta's just one year older, a little bit taller, and a little bit longer reach. And Doug, you're asking, what's that red thing on the rooster? It's called a comb. A comb. I should have known. I knew that at one time. Yeah. <laughs> the fleshy red outgrowth on top of the chicken's head, a comb. <laughs> uh, he's got the comb, and he's got the brush with the beard. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, everybody, watching us on the chat, uh, leaving the comments for it. Uh, Robert Chance was the one. Let us know. All right, here we go. The fight now. El Yuyu Acosta, the orthodox boxer. Silver trunks with black trim. And his opponent, Isaac Avelar Canelito. Danny Drew says he's 12-1 and one with one KO. What? What? Yeah. he's yeah. He was fighting at 35, Danny. And Acosta realized, you know what? I can make 130 going lower. Uh, so he's Going down a division, it's rare to see a fighter who's getting older but going down in weight. And it feels like this is a better opportunity for him. So we'll see, does he have power here? And also Acosta has been matched very, very well by Alex Campanovo here in Thompson Boxing. So this is an opportunity for him and the way he's been developed, it's. No 15-second knockout here. It's like most Thompson fighters, you're yeah, coming he, to work. He hasn't had a lot of soft touches. And the fighter he beat in his last fight last year um, was also uh, a prospect out of, uh, out of the Philadelphia area, I believe, yep. of, of Puerto Rican descent. And he traveled to Florida uh, to fight that young man and got the 10-round decision and looked pretty good fighting at 130 pounds. Yu Yu. Oh, Yu Yu is dangerous early, man. He is a good counter puncher. Open I'm up sorry, the not Yu Yu. Uh, Canalito. Yes, yeah. Avilar is is. He landed the good punch, and it was it was a right hook that he landed. And um, in his last fight, he scored an opening round knockdown against a, a top rated opponent. Yep. El Yu Yu represents Whittier, California. He brings a big fan base. It also has a lot of fans in. Los Mochis, Sinaloa. That was Hector Garcia, who um, Avalar dropped in the first round of his last fight. And Hector Garcia, in his very next fight, dominated Chris Colbert um, and, and is now in line to fight Roger Gutierrez for the WBA title. So, you know, um, Avalar is, he's a gatekeeper. Alex, how long have you been the matchmaker? So there it is. Roger Chapa, your question was, how long has Alex been the matchmaker? 22 years since Thompson Boxing started. 
Now he's the GM. So ask questions, we answer you here on Thompson Boxing on Friday night in Ontario, California. Our main event. Everything's been a decision tonight. Once again, Alex, everything's been a decision tonight, Alex. Alex <laughs> believes in making sure that Doug and I earn every single round. So will we get a knockout here in the main event? Thank you for watching us wherever you may be. It's what? Almost 11 o'clock on the West Coast. Y saludos a lo que están mirando en Los Mochis Sinaloa, Thompson Boxing, Orange, Montana, Lomita, Camarillo, San Diego, Ripon, and Sacramento. Sacramento, the home of UC Davis. And also Sac State, good boxing town. Yes, okay, I scored it for him. Appreciate you, you. Jeff is original trainer. South Whittier is where he's representing. Elder Medina and Ricardo Cummings in the corner of Canelito Avelar. You know what? That's a good idea. Mark Abrams said, let's give Alex a mic. You know what? Alex, you are going to talk. <laughs> we're gonna, we're, we're gonna Why not? We're going to yeah. include Alex Camponovo, the it's matchmaker for him. He's going to join us right here on the broadcast. Ask, you shall receive. I, I, I want to say this. I thought Avalar had a good opening round. But I can see, I can see uh, Acosta is already making adjustments. Bethel Durant, Doug Fisher, and now the general manager and matchmaker for Thompson Boxing, Alex Campanovo. Alex, what came into your mind making this fight? How'd you make it? Well, Yuyu has been inactive for 14 months. He had a couple of injuries, uh, a couple of fights that didn't go, you know, that we were planning to have, and he and, uh, we couldn't make him happen. And uh, Avalar is a guy that uh, is very durable, very tough opponent. I'm very confident in what you could do. In his last fight, he fought a guy that was undefeated with a lot of power, a lot of punching power, and he boxed his way to a victory in Telemundo. So, uh, you know, we believe in what he could do. This should also go uh, a few rounds, and he's going to have to make some adjustments, as uh, Doug just mentioned. And you're going to have to make the adjustments as you go, as Isaac Avelar coming off a loss to Hector Luis Garcia. Yeah. As Doug's mentioned it. And then, Hell of a fighter. In 2019, was knocked out by Stephen Fulton. So, yeah, no shame there. I don't know. Fulton is a is a monster. Uh, I like the adjustments that Acosta has made. I like the jab to the body. He's being a little more careful with his 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 jab. Um, he might even want to try leading with his with his right hand because what Avalar was doing was 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 timing the jab and 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 countering with the with the right hook over the jab or right after the jab. And um, I think Acosta is finding a home for his right hand. Lobito's boxing round. breakdowns watching us in the Philippines. Ooh, clash of heads. Salama, appreciate you watching us. And also Mikey Anthony say late night boxing. There it is. Now, Alex, how hard is it to make a fight on a night like tonight where you had Yulo Gein who got called a day ago? Yo, Ramon Ayala, who oh. hadn't fought in six years. Every, and to make it competitive. Every, every show, as you know, as you can imagine, is a challenge. Ooh, we, we got a competitive round yeah, right here. Absolutely. Back and forth action. This is, these are good exchanges. Oh! A big shot by Avalon with the left. And move back, Yuyu Acosta. His knees buckled, he got tagged. He gets hit with the right now. Canelito letting his hands go here in the second. Acosta as for back, and Yuyu is talking. All uh, right from Yuyu, but a big round for Canelito. Oh, there you go. Hustler Casino bringing us the replay, Doug. I told you, Avalar is dangerous early. He's a good counter puncher. And we're gonna see a, a, a yeah. Let's see, that was, uh, it was the left hand. Here's a better angle. Acosta's coming in and got caught with a short left. Short left. Oh. And, you, and Acosta let that left go just as, I'm sorry, uh, Avalar let that left hand go 
just as Acosta was loading up with his own punch. Now matchmaker Alex Capanova. Alex, you have Acosta, who's 12-1 the A side. Avalar, 16-4. He's got the 10 KOs. How hard a fight was this to make? Wasn't that very, it wasn't very hard. Uh, George, to his credits, is a guy that will take on any challenge. Okay. And uh, so it wasn't very problematic to make them the match. We understood that it was it's dangerous, you can see. So Avelar knows what he's doing over there. Absolutely. A strong round for Canelito Avelar de Aguas Calientes, Mexico. And you hear the corner of Avelar, who we're sitting next to. Tell him combinations. Now, guys, did you catch at the before the bell? Acosta landed a nice right hand. Yes, he did. did. He not? Yes. Did it seem like it stunned Av Avalar right, right at the bell? Yeah, or both. maybe it was just a good shot. I couldn't tell. It I was a good shot face. from yeah. here. Yeah. Because afterwards, kind of little look back at Acosta like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the heavier puncher looks like it's going to be Isaac Avalar. Avalar. Yeah, he's he's got the power. But a lot of that is his timing. He's, he's just a really good counter puncher. He's got good balance, yeah. too. Acosta, his only loss came to highly touted prospect Ruben Torres. I was at Omega Products International a couple years ago where Thompson Boxing is going to have their next show August 20th with Ace Torres as the main event. Get your tickets for that one. What are you looking for right now, Alec? When a matchmaker watches a fight, what do you look for? Well, I, I, I think that Acosta, what he's doing right now, is trying to box a little bit better. Uh, he's picking his spots a little bit better, but I don't think he can get carried away or be overconfident. If he actually moves a little bit more, like he knows how to do in box, he will do a little bit better. And he gets hit by a right by Avelar. Well, Acosta has been hit the hardest when he's being overly aggressive. Exactly. That's when he's gotten caught by uh, Avalar. Because Alex, you're bringing up Acosta in his career. So when you're watching this, you got to also think, OK, two, three fights from now, right? Or Exactly. You got to look ahead a little bit. And uh, obviously, this is the right step for him. And it's a step in that right direction. And just, you know, back oh, it up. And he throws a nice for right Acosta. It's all the right hand, especially when he leads with the right hand. Oh, man. But the body shot from Avilad. Wow. And he goes upstairs. This is a fight. Juan M1, you're right. Avilad body shot placement is excellent. Great point, Juan. Main event heating up. As we head to the fourth round, Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California, Thompson Boxing. And as always, thank you to Mr. Ken Thompson, Jeanette Gonzalez, working behind the scenes to make it happen. And the crew that sets up early in the afternoon, gets it going. Hustler Casino, bringing you the highlights, Doug. All right, I wonder what highlight it'll be, because there was a lot of moments in that round. Not boxing, oh, it was a right hand that snaps the head back of Avalar. Acosta found a home for that lead right. And there you see it in action. Jab to the body. And then a one-two with the right hand snapping the head back of Avalar. Sal Sanchez is watching us right now, the beast. The beast. What's up, Sal? Shoe shine boxing, head snapping power punches, you're right. G-Funk has you, you up. I've got Avalar up by okay. a point. I've got Avalar up 29 to 28. So does Dondi all day. So going back and forth. Yeah, it's a close fight. And Canelo's winning the crowd. He, he didn't show up with anybody, but he's getting some audience participation here. Good fight here. Development show at the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario, California. Thompson Boxing, make sure you download the app. Southpaw, 
Canelito Avelar, 16 and 4, 10 KOs. If you just watch it, join us right now. And if you're up right now watching us, why don't you share? Let people know, like, hey man, late night boxing is a good one. Yeah, this is a good main event. Hotly contested. The bigger shots are landed by the Southpaw Avelar. A close fight breaking out here. Yeah, and if Avalar is landing the bigger shots, then it's up to Acosta to either outwork him or outbox him, or a combination of those two things. And I'll add another uh, outmaneuver. <laughs> if you can't outpunch him, outbox him, outwork him, outmaneuver him. And if you're smart, like Acosta, set some traps up in there. That's what you have to do, right, Doug? That Acosta with 13 fights, you got to learn those, right? How to set those traps? Yeah, and I don't, I don't, it's not easy uh, against an opponent like Avalar, who's got good experience, and he's, he's, a, he's a young man in his, his athletic prime. You, you hear the punches from Avalar, too. Yes, you do. And his corner just told him, your punches are harder. Let's throw. They, they, they just told Avelar. We're in the red corner. You'll hear the instructions. I think now we're starting to see, like, okay, you, we're both tagging each other. A little bit more respect. Why are you nodding your head, Alex? I see that a lot. Cause, you. Yeah, because uh, Acosta is landing that straight right. I'm actually enjoying this fight. It's, it's you know, all the back and forth action. It's just a terrific match, I think, if I may say so. It is, it is. Now, all right, here's the question. How did you find Avelar? Where'd he come from? Well, he comes from a, uh, a, a group of, of, of managers and trainers that were working in Mexico. OK. Uh, and that's what I liked about the fact that Avalar, he switched trainers. And not that he wasn't taking this seriously, but the people that he's working with are serious people. Now? Yeah, and now, now. So you can sh it's showing here in the, in the ring. But that doesn't say you know, anything bad about uh, uh, Yuyu. Yuyu's doing his best over there. And then he has to, again, figure him out. I think the fact that Avalar is a lefty, a lot of fighters have a little bit of, you know, it's a process to adjust within the fight. Sometimes you run out of time, so. Yeah, and that's my question because we know Acosta, we know Brewer, we know the, the A-side guys, but you bring somebody in like, we've never seen before. It's always curious, like, how does a matchmaker go about finding guys who are quality that are going to put up a good fight? Right. I mean, you know, you can do a little bit of research, and you also have to get lucky. <laughs> yeah. You have to get lucky. It's not really a science, but uh, the most important thing for all the guys that are promoted by our company, by Thompson Boxing Promotion, that they have to learn and show us something. This is, you know, this is a learning curve that they have to go through. They have to go through guys like Avalar. They have to, to, to figure a way out of a tough fight like this if they want to move up in the, in, the, in the boxing world. And it's a shorter lease with Thompson, right? Absolutely. It's not an easy business. The unofficial scorecard of Doug Fisher, 38-38. And these are close rounds, too. So yeah, the first two rounds to Avalar, he landed the, 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 the power shots, one of which uh, sent uh, Yuyu stumbling back. Um, in, in rounds three and four, Yuyu came back on the strength of uh, you know, greater activity, but also landing that right hand. Avalar trying to split the guard. Avalar has coming. a hard time defending against that, 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 that straight right from, from Acosta. So throw him more, right? David Avila watching us right now. Fantastic boxing scribe. As Avila oh, yeah. on the ropes, he gets hit. He's got some oh, body, body yes. shot. Dropped him. Body attack, did it. The body work from Acosta to the solar plex. And Avalar gets up. He gets up at nine. 
fifth round. Acosta made a concentrated effort to go to the body and it paid off. And he's gonna attack. Avilar trying to stay close. Trying to hold on, he's holding on to the gloves. And he's just holding on, holding on. Avilar gets hit upstairs with the right. Acosta has a very hurt Avilar against the ropes. Avilar still hasn't recovered. 30 seconds to go in the round. Grimacing is on the line. Still trying to hold on. Yeah, he's, yeah. Avalar is wisely hold, tying him up on the inside. Acosta needs to nail him upstairs to bring those hands up so we can land another body shot. And a body shot did land by Acosta. A right hand from Avalar pushes him back. Final seconds of the fifth round, a strong round para El Yuyu. Jorge Acosta chopping the body of Avalar. Replay is brought to you by Hustler Casino, Doug. All right, so straight right to the chest, straight right to the solar plexus. See a different angle here. Straight right in effect to the head and to the body. And I think this might be after the knockdown. Avalar is in uh, survival mode. He's holding on, he's doing what he has to do to, to run out the clock. Okay, there's the knockdown. And it was it was a, it was a shot to the body that, that did it. Doctor checking out of Avalar. So let it continue. Now Avalar has been down this road before. He's been Avalar's definitely been in the bigger battles against better competition. Now it's up to see if you you can attack here. Avalar seemed composed between rounds. Yep. Six round. I, I think Avalar is still dangerous. He's got the bigger pop. Yeah, Acosta needs to be careful. He can't throw caution to the wind. Even though he had his man really hurt in that previous round. And Avalar did the veteran move of holding on as much as he could. He got away with as much as he could. Especially the holding. And you hear the crowd yelling for Acosta, you, you. You step on the gas if you're Acosta here in the six. Oh, there's a right. But only one. Yeah. But the right hand is always gonna be the shot that lands for Acosta for some reason. Avalar does not defend well against that punch. And traditionally, that, that, that it's the right hand that works for an orthodox fighter against the southpaw. Yuyo Costa, silver and black, just join us right now. 12 and one. Isaac Avelar Canelito, 16 and four. But he's got the 10 KOs, he has heavier hands, but he went down in the fifth round. Halfway through the six. It's almost like Acosta not doing enough, huh? I guess a tired fighter? I think he can still feel Avalar's power. Is that what it is? Yeah, he respects Avalar. Okay. I, and uh, Avalar is dangerous. He's, 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 just, he's got that counter punching ability. And he tried to go to the body. You see Avalar covered himself up really fast. Yeah, Avila's body is still hurting. Six rounds, scheduled for eight. Yeah, you see, 
Avila trying to counter, right? Stays up nice and tight. And there's that left. Yeah, Av Avalar is, is, is dangerous with, with both hands. He's got the right hook and he's got the straight left. He's got his legs back too, Doug. I, like I said, he seemed really composed between rounds, like he had recovered. Arvin checking in. Saludos, saludos, vale. Interesting. All right, how do you guys have it? We got our own official. And thank you for watching wherever you may be around the world. Mustafa, hello to everybody in the Philippines. Saludos a la gente que está mirando los noches sin alor. And we got Florida checking in still. Late night. What up, Mikey Anthony? We appreciate that, man. We have a lot of fun interacting with you, the fans. Again, this is your show for you. We know if you're watching this, you're a hardcore fan, and you're watching fighters who we're gonna be making the grade. Jump from here, maybe some show box, maybe some pro box. Maybe whatever. <laughs> Alex will take you wherever you need to be. Yeah. Sure, why not? Telemundo. <laughs> Tuto Zavala, whatever you yeah, need. Hey. <laughs> All right, seventh round, Alex Caponovo, Golden, uh, Golden Boy. Excuse me? <laughs> He's worked with Golden Boy, he's worked with PBC, he's worked with Matchroom, he's worked with Trula, he works with everybody. What do you like so far about you, you? I see you making kind of gestures towards him. Well, I was, I was hoping that he was gonna be a little bit smarter in the last round, and now, you know, these two rounds that are coming up are gonna be key oh. for both guys. Avalar knows that he's behind because of the knockdown. A desperate oh. fighter, Avalar. This is something else. Yeah. Avalar really came to win tonight. My goodness. What an effort. Got his legs both back. Fighters. Knows that he's down in the cars after getting dropped. It's almost like he's looking for the big shot, right, Doug? Like the big counter? Canada's watching us, 3 a.m. There you go. Hopefully you have some Molsons. <laughs> Cape Coral, Florida. Aldo Aguilar, what's happening, Aldo? Aldo, make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app to stay up to date on all our shows. Next one, August 20th. And also behind the scenes features of our fighters. Mark Abrams, you're right. Campanova equals ratings. <laughs> Hashtag Mark Abrams. Yeah, Mark Abrams. You, you, with his fans. You, you's got to start snapping that head back yeah. and getting some respect from Avalar. Avalar coming at him. Less than a minute to go in the seventh round. Here we go. There's there's some right hands. We heard you, Doug. Acosta needs to he needs to make he needs to earn some respect. <laughs> Our main event tonight. 30 seconds to go. George Acosta, 12 and one. Canelito, Isaac Avalar, 16 and four. They'll use the southpaw. Shot landed by Canelito. Oh, another good shot, another good round. Back and forth action. Very close round. Q Rules Boxing Gym in Halifax, Nova Scotia is watching us right now. Hey, the coaches won their pro fight. Her pro fight, her debut at 43, very nice. Cutman C, Caesar Campos. TKO Boxing does a great job. Keeping Hector Lopez on track. 
So right off that Cesar Campos. Does a good job with uh, Alexis Rocha, Ronnie Rios, and everybody in that stable. Jamie Smith, I got you, you up, but it's a great fight. Our main event, so far wins tonight. They've all gone the distance. Chavez, Leo Sanchez, Jeff Lomito, Richard Brewer, and you saw those fights on Supreme Boxing. Three fighters are this is the eighth and final round. Eighth and final round here at the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario, California. All the fights have gone the distance. Will this one go the distance? Do we have a Doug Fisher unofficial card? I've got Acosta up. Three points, uh, 67 to, or sorry, two points, 67 to 65. Acosta, not Avalor, right? Yeah, Acosta up, but that last round I scored for Acosta, it could have easily gone to Avalar. So it could be, the fight could be up for grabs. Yeah, the big difference in that in this round. Yeah. Eighth round, 10-8. Yes. So Acosta is up on Doug's unofficial scorecard. And the knockdown being the difference. What can Isaac Avelar Canelito do here in the eighth and final round? And right now, the destruction from Avalar is just basically go after it. He's got the bigger shot. Can he land one? Acosta being smart here. Aggressiveness from Isaac Avalar and George Acosta. Acosta is outworking Avalar in this final round. Yep. And it's really, it's Avalar who really needs to let it all hang out because it's been a hotly contested fight and he's the guy who was dropped. So he has to know that his opponent has at least a slight edge. With 50 seconds to go in the fight. Now, if you're Avalar, you just got to empty the kitchen sink, right? Yes, that's what I think. And Acosta's boxing smart in this final Very round. Very nice. It's moving well. Yes, he is. A Yuyo Acosta lands his shots and moves just yes. like that. Yeah. This would have been a real good fight at 10 rounds. A heck of a fight at eight. Acosta dropping Avalar in the fifth. Is that going to be the difference? And that'll do it. Eight good rounds. Alex Caponova, thank you very much for thank joining us. And for also making every single fight tonight go the distance. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Get the money's worth. Oh, a good night of boxing. We'll come back with the final decision from the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. 
Find yours at bellguard.com. Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of boxing action to the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Carla Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Fernando Villarreal, all see about the same. 77 to 74, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. From Whittier, California, George, Eluyu Acosta. The knockdown being huge for Yuyo Acosta. Knocking down his opponent in the fifth. And gets a victory, 77-74. Congratulations to El Yuyo Acosta. He bit his 13th victory tonight. Really strong boxing against a really game and tough, hard-hitting Isaac Avelar. Yeah, uh, Avelar was better than I thought he would be, and I thought he would be dangerous early in the fight. Well, guess what? He was dangerous throughout the fight forced Acosta to step his game up, uh, step up his offense more than we're used to seeing. He did get the knockdown, didn't get the stoppage, but it was a, it was a really entertaining eight-round fight. I like, I want to see Avalar again. Man. <laughs> that dude comes a fight. <laughs> you, you, you said it. He's uh, on that brink of being that gatekeeper. He's a gatekeeper, man, totally. But he is, if you are not on your P's and oh, Q's, yeah. he can come in He'll and expose make it. it a long night for you. And this is what we we're talking about. You know, some people are like, oh, Acosta only has one knockout, there's no power. But we mentioned it. He's been brought up very tough. The matchmaking's been very good for him where he had to learn and had to go through adversity. And because of that, was able to survive an onslaught from Avelar early and True. able to turn it around and control this fight. He True, good. you know, that's a, that's a good point. A lot of guys, a lot of up and comers, a lot of guys that are Acosta's age or the same experience, those first two rounds would have discouraged them. They had lost the will to, yeah. to, to win. Acosta just turned it on, you know, and, and those got, are, got smarter and fought harder. And those are fighters like Avelad where you let them come in, they come and they know that the first couple rounds they're going to try to bite your head off and they usually end it. Not tonight. Coming up, we're going to have an interview with the winner tonight, Yuyo Acosta. Live from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube. Everybody dreams big, but few grind for it. Everybody cuts corners expecting great results. Only some understand how to climb to the top. Only some can become champion and stay at the top. On August 20th, the future is one step closer. Live from Corona, Ruben Ace Torres will try to stay perfect. 
also featuring Louis Lopez in a Southern California welterweight clash against Malik Roshan Birdsong. Plus, undefeated lightweights Pedro Valencia versus Adrian Corona. Somebody's O has got to go. Path to Glory, Saturday, August 20th at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Watch it live or watch the stream. Tickets on sale now. Don't miss it. Uh, back here at Ringside, Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and tonight's winner in the main event, El Yu Yu. Representing Whittier, Los Mochi, Sinaloa. Win number 13 for George Acosta. George, that was tough was. early on, and then you controlled it. How did you do that? Yeah, um, you know what? I, I definitely overestimated, uh, underestimated, I would say, okay. uh, my opponent. Uh, I, I saw that he got, you know, he was susceptible to body shots, and I thought I would set him up early in, in the fight with some body shots, but. Um, you know, he was tough. He, he was, you know, he's tougher than I expected. Uh, you know, I learned that you can never underestimate anyone. Um, and, 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 you know, I didn't take him lightly, but I definitely was a little bit of, a, of a overestimating or underestimating him. Um, but he was tough, man. He was tough. He, he, came, he came out, and uh, he, he gave everything he had. Was ring rust a, a factor for you? It's been a while. You've been in a ring for a while. You know what? Uh, I felt really good throughout the training camps, and, and uh, well, I say training camps. I say training camps because I had word that I was going to fight in in, uh, in April, then May, then June, right. and then I was going to fight in June, and they got canceled. And uh, I was like, okay, you know what? I feel good. Let's carry on to July. Uh, and not to make any excuses, but I'm going to be honest with you. I had to cut training camp uh, early uh, for this fight because my body was just you tired. Get, you get stale. All my, those starts and well, stops. It's my, not good for my, a, my body. A got tired, yeah. and uh, I was like, you know what? Let, let, you know, let's stop a early a training camp. You know, a week and a half earlier. Uh, let my body recover as much as I can, and then uh, hope that hope that I'll be prepared for for, for fight night. Um, I got the job done. Uh, you know, it's it's not exactly what I wanted. Uh, I was able to make some adjustments, control towards the end, start using my jab a little bit more. Um, I noticed I hurt him to the body, so I fell in love with it. But doing that, I left myself my guard down. I left myself open, and he was able to counter and, and land shots. So I had to be smart and then uh, play it safe the last round and just use my distance. You hear that? You hear that breakdown? Because his last time he was here, he was on the broadcast with <laughs> That's us. That's right, for the main event. So uh, you, you did the broadcast right. You show up in the main event. You drop him to the body with the body shot. What was it like when you're in here and you hear all the crowd? Or do you even hear them? You know what? Uh, it was kind of a it, – it's been such a long time that, that I've heard a crowd, especially my home, home crowd. You know, my last fight was over 14 months ago in, in Florida, and I only had five people that came out yeah. to yeah. support. Uh, so walking out, you know, walking out over there on the stage, uh, everyone was cheering, and, and I got emotional. Like in my mind, like I, I wanted to tear up a little bit. I'm like, "Whoa, hey, is that why you took forever to walk out, man?" <laughs> no, they they, they, they brought the out the wrong song. The song yeah. was wrong, but right. you know, oh, okay, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're not gonna blame anybody. The song was wrong, though. I, I like the song, though. I never heard it, but I like it. So. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Good work. Wait, wait. One more to. No, just was that the toughest fight of your professional career? And do you think that getting through that adversary, that adversity, is it gonna serve you well going forward? Uh, absolutely. I, I, you know, just to be 100% honest, um, I, I underestimated my opponent. You know, I, I thought I, I didn't think he was going to be as tough as he was, and and not that I was going to go and just, just work, uh, you know, work him down and, and knock him out or anything. Uh, but I did underestimate him. Uh, I underestimated his power. He caught me a couple times. Uh, surprisingly, you know, I had my hands down and he's, he caught me. He's crafty. Yeah, he's he, smart. He's, he's crafty. Yeah. You know, he he has some really tough yeah. opposition. You know, he fought for the interim WBA yeah. title. You yeah. Know? yeah. He, um, but still, you know, I learned that not not to underestimate any opponent. You know, you never know when your last fight is in there. And uh, learning and experience, you did the job, you got the victory, you got the place all rocking. Yeah. And you had Whittier and Los Mochi Sinaloa representing for you, man. Everybody on the Facebook and YouTube, they, they were all on your side watching tonight. Yeah. So congratulations to you. Thank you so much, right, man. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thirteen and one, Georgia Costa gets the victory. So for everybody on the broadcast, for Doug Fisher. Alice Campanova, Paula Fornia, Janet Gonzalez, and of course, Mr. Ken Thompson. Thank you for watching Thompson Boxing. I'm your host, Bethel Duran. The next show, August 20th, wait, August, yeah, August, August 20th, 20th in Corona at Omega Products International. Good night, everybody.